Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Lara and today we are doing the 2023 Pick a Card Tarot Reading. Before we begin, I just want to let you know of something that I am offering right now and that is the personal 2023 Tarot and Mediumship Reading. So I am going to be doing the exact same spread in this pick a card reading that I am offering in my personal readings. So if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy the messages that come through, know that you can go onto my website, spiritpsychic.org and order yourself the same exact reading, only I am tuning in only to you and your energies with your spirit guides instead of this general pick a card reading that will be watched by hundreds of people, okay? So, <laughs> It is only $100 and what happens is you order it, you email me your information and I will do a video reading with my face in it with the same exact tarot spread and everything and I will send it back to you within seven days. So upon ordering it, you will receive your reading in seven days. And this is a very limited time offer. I am only accepting orders that are bought within December and January. And this is a wonderful way to start out the new year. I do this exact reading for myself every single year. So I thought it would be really great to offer this reading to my subscribers and viewers and clients. So there it is. Go ahead and get it while it's still here. And yeah, it's, it's just a a great way to start the new year honestly like just to get a really good overview of 2022 and what you learned and what you're taking into 2023 with you and as well as what is going to happen for you in this year ahead so go ahead and get a personal reading um and in the meantime let's dive into this pick a card reading okay so take a moment to ask yourself your spirit guides the universe what does 2023 have in store for me what do you need to let me know this new year to pre best prepare me for the year ahead what messages do you have for me spirit guides of love and light so that i may leave this reading feeling uplifted confident and secure we have group number one, group number two, group number three, and group number four. You might feel drawn to more than one. That is perfectly fine. Just take a moment to look at these piles and see whichever one you feel strongly guided towards. Which one is your intuition drawing you in towards, okay? Once you've selected your pile or piles, you can skip ahead using the timestamps or watch through. Let's begin. Group number one, welcome. Let's see what 2023 has in store for you. So this first card is actually going to represent the overall spiritual theme and lesson that the universe has in store for you. I notice over the years, I've been doing readings for years, that when I do like a year ahead reading, there is almost always like a spiritual theme or lesson that spirit has for us that year. And if we apply that lesson to every area of our life that we're having struggles or wanting to see growth, you will see growth. Okay. So this is going to represent your theme, your spiritual lesson that the universe is guiding you through. You have the smoky mirror, beautiful. And we have the Buddha here meditating with some beautiful fog surrounding and it looks like they're submerged in water looking at their own reflection. So I'm going to read this straight from the book, guys. The essence of the smoky mirror. The smoky mirror represents the aspects of what is implied yet cannot be immediately shown in the world. The mystery of how things come together and how they fall apart without obvious casualty. This symbol also represents the shadow of the human psyche, the parts of the self that one disowns. The smoky mirror can also represent a state of denial or the inability or refusal to see the truth. Now, having this card come out upright for you to represent 2023, this is an invitation from the universe. So it's like the universe or spirit or God or whatever you want to call it is inviting you to bring this theme, this energy into your life. And this is what it says. When the symbol of the smoky mirror appears, you're invited to see beyond your own self. Acknowledge that past the limits of your current ability to perceive, there is a vast interconnected world where events are orchestrated in divine order, but challenging to fully grasp. Now is the time to trust that no matter what the current conditions of your world reflect, the hidden realms, all aspects of the human journey are celebrated. In the, in the hidden realms, all aspects of the human journey are celebrated. The beauty and the darkness, the misery and the courage. No matter where you are on your journey, know that some things are meant to be a mystery, which you are not meant to understand, only through experience. 
take heart for the smoky mirror will ultimately show you the beauty and wonder once the fog lifts the distortion you see now what this card is saying is that there are situations in your life that might be frustrating to you right now but when you're able to look back at this time in your life in the future you will fully grasp and understand why things have to be how they are right now so for example let's say there's like a delay you really want to move you really want to move in with someone but there's a delay you have to wait until their lease is up you have to wait until you saved enough money you don't understand universe why is this delay happening are you punishing me and it's not that the universe is punishing you you might see in that particular example that because this delay happened you were able to get the perfect home for you at the perfect time when interest rates were wonderful and this beautiful home came up on the market that you are going to be happy at for the rest of your life. Whereas if you got what you wanted right away, you might have had high interest rates, a home that you didn't really like that was falling apart. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes, actually not sometimes, all of the time, the universe is orchestrating things in perfect divine timing. So when there are frustrating delays in your life, those delays are there for a reason. And so your spirit guides, the universe is coming through to remind you of this. Whatever frustration or impatience you're experiencing right now when it comes to your goals and your dreams, it is all divinely orchestrated and you're going to understand exactly why things had to play out the way that they're supposed to play out in the future. So right here in the present moment, step into your Buddha energy, okay? Breathe deeply, relax, and understand that life is always neutral. There will always be challenges. There will always be blessings. There will always, always be doors closing and doors opening. And instead of getting so heavily involved in the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of life, why don't you just sit peacefully and observe from this higher perspective that everything always balances out over time and everything happens for a reason and all of the frustrations you are experiencing are for your highest good one way or another and all of the blessings and opportunities that you are faced with right now are happening for a reason so the year 2023 you are being asked to step in this meditative neutral energy and become less heavily involved with the ebbs and flows see things from a neutral perspective and you will experience profound peace in 2023 live life gracefully and accept that everything is happening for a reason and when you embrace this attitude of inner peace life becomes so much easier you wear the world loosely around your shoulders instead of so tightly knit and frustrated and upset you just say you know what things are happening for a reason and that's totally fine and you step into this energy of someone who's like perpetually on vacation just vibing out in the sunshine and just not a problem in the world even when life is falling apart around you in the eyes of everyone else okay beautiful beautiful spiritual lesson to take with you in 2023 and i'm very excited to see what else is happening for you so let's dive into the tarot so the first card we are going to look at is your previous year 2022 as a whole what does it look like we have the great bear this is kind of like judgment this is deciding what is right for you this is a powerful major arcana card so this was actually a pretty pretty big year for you um and had a really big theme of judging yourself your past others and just kind of figuring out what energies you are carrying and not carrying in your life i really feel that in the beginning of 2022 you might have done a lot of work in terms of forgiving the past and kind of thinking about the past thinking about your childhood thinking about the resentment you carried and kind of allowing yourself to let it go. This card came out upright, and I wanna say that that is really, really positive. You've accrued a lot of positive karma this year for yourself by making the active decision to forgive others and to heal the past and to let go. And then I see a little bit more in the center of the year in like uh, the summer months, or in the Northern Hemisphere, that would be the Southern months, or, oh my god, what am I saying? In the Northern Hemisphere, that would be the summer months. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, your winter months, center of 2022. Like, you know, August, July, June, that area. Um, <laughs> I'm losing my mind, guys. 
uh, I see more of this energy shifting towards, okay, I've like let go of the past. I've done a lot of inner healing work. I forgive. I'm releasing the past. Um, now it's time to determine like the present and who I interact with in the present and what energies are they bringing me? How can I better take care of my needs? Kind of judging uh, what you need to be happy, to be successful, what you need to feel secure. And then I see in the later months of 2022 that have recently passed, uh, you're kind of making some actions and judgments when it comes to um, just kind of being more conscious about who and what you invite into your life. Does that make sense? So I feel like in the beginning of 2022, you were kind of forgiving the past and releasing its grip over you, you know, releasing the karma that was gripping you up, you know, and letting that go and then doing a lot of inner healing work to really determine the types of people and situations and energies that you need to be around to make sure that you're at peace. And then in the end of 2022, we are now taking action like, okay, making new friends, uh, letting go of certain individuals that, or like at least like spending less time with them if they're not good for us, making sure to take care of ourselves and our own needs. So there's been a lot of decisions and inner reflection and healing that has gone on in 2022 for you. So that is really beautiful. And I, I really do see that you have accrued a lot of um, positive karma. And keep in mind, the universe never forgets any good deed. It does not go unrewarded. Any bad deed does not go unpunished, okay? So second card, what have you learned from the past year? What have you learned from 2022? Page of Arrows, Ren. Okay, this is a card about well, first off, I feel like 2022, you opened up a lot of new communication with people. You opened up new ideas, new communication. And um, also, I feel like you have increased your honesty and ability to communicate healthily with those around you. I feel like this was a year where you matured a lot. Uh, I feel like this is a year where you really got clear with how you can meet your own needs and manage your own expectations. I feel like this was a year where... Um, there might have been a new friendship or new project uh, that entered your life. Also, I'm noticing the snow all around this wren, and uh, snow really is uh, is a spirit of gentleness. So these lessons that you learned came in very gently. They weren't like violent lessons. <laughs> you know, sometimes the universe will give us like violent shakeups and shifts and changes um, that really teaches a lesson. 2022 was a much more gentle year for you, where you kind of gently realized, you know. Uh, where in your life needs more focus so that you can become a healthier, happier individual. And I feel like you had new connections gently come in. It wasn't forced. It wasn't chased. They just gently came into your life and really helped guide this process. I feel like external relationships and friendships and stuff or like our biggest guiding force in life sometimes. Our biggest lessons come through our relationships, our biggest ideas and ideals, they, they come through from other people. You know, the universe really uses other humans and animals to connect with us and talk to us. So um, you had a lot of that come in. Okay, next card out, we have what you aspire to be in the next 12 months. So in 2023, what is your aspirations? The moon on water. It's very unclear right now. This is a major arcana card though. Um, ooh, I, I really feel in this moon card, you're really looking to manifest more, manifest more of what you want. But I feel you're pretty open to the ebbs and flows of life and... Um, Things kind of feel out of your control, doesn't it, group number one? Uh, you just don't know exactly how things are going to play out for you. So maybe there are some elements here that are a bit out of your control. Maybe there are some, there are some things in development um, in 2023 that are a bit out of your control, out of your reach. And you're just hoping that everything goes and plays out accordingly. I almost feel like this year is one where the universe is taking the reins and you might feel this as well. Like maybe you're hoping for certain situations to unfold, like a certain relationship to unfold, a certain job or move to unfold, but you're just, it, like it almost feels like the universe is more in control this year. And you feel that if, I, I feel like 2022, 
has really taught you the art of alignment and aligning your energy and your mind and your actions with that which you want to manifest. And you've put in a lot of hard work um, to make sure you're in alignment with what you want to manifest. And uh, currently, as you're watching this, you're, you're kind of focusing on the spiritual theme of like surrounding yourself with the right people who are in alignment with what you want as well. And you're hoping that through this alignment that you've been doing in your life, the positive things that you want to see will manifest for you. But it's largely out of your control. You can't really see the path forward in 2023. I almost feel like there is so much potential, so many different things that can happen this year that it's kind of hard for you to get a clear grasp of what your life will look like by the end of 2023. Mm. But the moon on the water shows that you are looking for pretty big changes to happen and you're just hoping for the best. What empowers you in reaching your aspirations this year? We have the green woman in reversed. Uh, this is kind of like the empress in the tarot. Uh, the green woman in uh, European paganism uh, really represents fertility and abundance and the ability to use your magic and again, alignment, using your energy, embodying the energy of what you want to manifest. That is what is going to put you into alignment with the things you want. And if you are exuding this energy of peace, like we saw in the smoky mirror, and love and having your needs met, you are going to attract massive success, guys. The key word for you this year is alignment, okay? Alignment. Instead of forcing and chasing and pushing a relationship to unfold a certain way, a career to unfold a certain way, an outcome to unfold a certain way, spirit is asking you to just take care of your own energy. Make sure that your needs are met. Make sure that you're getting exercise, healthy foods. You are socialized. You are clear energetically, you know, do whatever you have to do to put yourself into a high vibrational energy. Does that make sense? Okay. So, you know, if a relationship isn't meeting your needs, for example, go make some new friends, go talk to new people, go get new hobbies, or maybe you're just totally burnt out and over overworked, clear your schedule get enough sleep. Like if you take care of yourself this, uh, this year, and you put yourself into the uh, into alignment with abundance, with being at peace, with being at ease, the universe will take care of the rest. Of course, keep working towards whatever goals you have this year, but if you are working towards your goals and you make sure that you are embodying this green woman energy of just being abundance itself, being that which you want to manifest itself, and just taking care of yourself, making sure that you are peaceful, you are happy on your own, you are completely taken care of when those two things are in play you will see dr drastic results i assure you okay number five what may stand in the way of you reaching your aspirations king of vessels heron so this is a court card as well and court cards can represent other people but the king of vessels is a very mature man or masculine person in your life who I'm not seeing that they're standing in the way of uh, your aspirations. I feel like this person's going to play a really big role in how your future develops. And it's, oh, I just heard, choose your partner wisely. That phrase just came into my mind. The people that you spend the most time with, the people that you invest the most energy into, they have such a powerful impact on your mindset, on your happiness, and how your life unfolds. And spirit is coming through in this reading to say, group number one, this is so unbelievably important for you to understand. If you're trying to achieve career success, for example, and all of your friends are people who all they wanna do is smoke weed all day long, eat junk food, gossip, they have no ambition in life, you know, they're perfectly content working their boring, low paying job and complaining about it. How are you embodying success and career growth when all the people you surround yourself with are embodying that energy? You know, the King of Herons is coming through to say, surround yourself with emotionally intelligent people who are fulfilled in life or striving for fulfillment in life. 
Surround yourself with people who inspire you and uplift you and nurture you and who you just admire, who you like. That's a really important question to ask yourself. Do I like these people in your life? Your partner, your friends, your family? Are they an energy that I want to embody more of? If the answer is no, spend less time with them because you don't even understand how much that influences your reality. And many of you are blessed because the King of Vessels did come out upright. So you do have a really loving, inspirational, divinely connected, emotionally intelligent influence in your life. Friends, partners, lovers, whatever. You, I, I do feel that you have some wonderful connections in your life. And for many of you, there might be new connections that you have um, made in the second half of 2022 specifically that are this embodiment of the king of vessels you know um very much like a go-getter emotionally intelligent psychically tapped in uh creative mature and going places in life you know what i mean and i hate to say this message sometimes because sometimes it is the people we grew up with it is the people that we are most comfortable with have the longest history with we might find that we fall out of favor with them like our paths deviate and you are in this place where you are wanting to be peaceful you are wanting to feel secure you are wanting to reach your goals and grow but if you're surrounded by these people who are not interested in growth all they do is complain and play the victim like you don't even understand how much that affects your energy i remember at one point in my life i had a friend group that did nothing but complain all the time they were playing the victim and they had deep deep insecurities and i didn't even realize it but um, while I was hanging out with those people, I was really, really insecure about my relationship, about my job, about my goals. Like I was constantly worried, constantly questioned and just in this very stressful energy. Well, as fate would have it, this entire friend group uh, completely left me and I was on my own. And I noticed this resounding level of peace and security I felt after I left those people. I'm like, oh my gosh, these insecurities that I had weren't even my own. They were insecurities that the people around me put into my mind, planted into my mind. And once I left them, suddenly I'm like, wow, I'm actually in a really great relationship and I'm going places in my career. And like, I didn't realize how good I had it because I was surrounded by people who saw nothing but the worst. So that is one thing that will definitely influence this year, the people you surround yourself with. So spend less time with those who just aren't an inspiration for you if that makes sense and spend more time around people who genuinely love you are secure who you like and who are an inspiration okay question six your relationships and emotions in the upcoming year speaking of we have the ace of stones in reversed ace of pentacles in reversed the foundation of life okay so I feel many of you are in resistance to meeting new people, um, embracing new relationships. And this could be from like anxiety. This can be social anxiety. This can be because you're very comfortable in your comfort zone. But with this card coming out, um, you know, whenever aces come out in reversed, the universe is trying to hand you a new opportunity, new energies, a new path, and you are blocking it. Okay. Um, and the universe is saying, listen, your relationships truly are the foundation of life. Okay. And it's the same as your job and your home, that's your foundation. So it's really, really important to make sure it's a healthy foundation. If you are working a job that gives you no spare time or no money to enjoy your spare time, that's not a good foundation to build your life upon. And we have been telling you to get a new one, right? Or same thing with your friends and relationships. If this is an unhealthy friendship or relationship, you don't actually even like the person, you know, we've been telling you through your intuition, it's time to get new connections. It's time to put yourself out there, you know, go on first friendship dates, etc. to surround yourself and consciously choose the people you surround yourself with and make sure they're an uplifting influence in your life, you know, um, and you've been blocking that out. So the universe is really guiding you to not block that out, you know, embrace new friendships this year, embrace meeting people. Um, and also be a little bit more picky choosy, you know, like you don't, 
have to be friends with everyone, right? There are so many people in the world to be friends with. And, you know, this has been a big theme that I've been learning myself uh, this past month, especially. Like, I've been doing affirmations surrounding my social life. And especially I've been using the affirmation, I love meeting new people. I love getting to know new people. Um, and it's really been awesome because I have genuinely been meeting so many new people. And when we meet new people, they bring in new energies and ideas um, into our life. And it really does speed up a lot of our manifestations. Like if you're constantly surrounding yourself with the same old energy, same old people, life becomes stagnant. And I feel for a while, group number one, especially with the moon on the water, representing what you want to manifest in 2023, you want to manifest change growth at a much more rapid rate and spirit is saying new energies new people will bring that in new situations will bring that in so please do not fear going out of your comfort zone mm. okay <laughs> so what was that six seven your work career and finances this year ahead we have the five of bows in reversed celebration celebration oh four of both sorry i said five didn't i um this actually represents um some type of party some type of um elevation so for many of you you might be leveling up career wise or financial wise there's something to celebrate that's coming through here this could be a promotion this could be a graduation this could be um a successful year in business this can be starting your own business this can be um you know some type of financial goal like paying off all your debt or having your first six-figure year or having your first i don't know six-figure month even for some, I don't know what you guys are doing, five-figure month. Um, <laughs> like we see some type of celebration coming through, but it did come out in reversed, which is really beckoning this, like, I, I don't know, I feel this doubt coming through from you right now. Oh, I feel such a specific energy that is really exciting. Like I feel that 2023 is the year where you make a really big transition in your career and finances. And you just feel a greater level of peace and excitement when it comes to your career or your job. But it's all kind of dependent on the previous card uh, cards of how willing you are to go out of your comfort zone and how willing you are to embrace this new energy. Ooh, I, it's really hard for me to speak in words about what I'm feeling energetically with this card. It's just stay focused on your goals. Don't give up. Surround yourself with the right people, the right energies. Put yourself into alignment. That's I that's what I'm really feeling. You're putting yourself into alignment with this success, with this celebration. You are surrounding yourself with the right people. And it doesn't even have to be people you're friends with. Even on social media. Like let's just say I'll, I'll use an example. I'm a life coach, right? I'm a spiritual life coach. I offer that on my website, spiritpsychic.org, if you're interested. Um, I surround myself with other life coaches, with other really powerful psychics and spiritual workers. I read tons of books written by shamans and high priestesses all over the world and healers all over the world. And I surround myself with that energy. And I surround myself with friends who are going places in life, who have stars in their eyes, who are optimistic, who are excited about being alive. And because of that, it rubs off tremendously. And in addition, I've been doing affirmations. I've been saying things like, I love growing my business. I'm so focused on growing my business. I love helping other people. And all of these compounding factors have put me into alignment to be where I am today and to offer these readings for you here on YouTube. And I just feel such a similar energy for you in 2023, but you have to consciously decide that you're going to be in that energy. It's not just going to happen for you. If you're just going to sit around doing the same thing and waiting for the success to come through in your career and finances, it's not going to come through. But if you continue putting yourself in the right environments, aligning yourself energetically, um, embracing newness, not giving up, growing, 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 
this celebration is going to happen and this is a really big achievement this card also comes through um when especially if somebody's getting married or buying a house okay so that might um be something you do as well especially if you're getting married you might combine finances with uh, your spouse and be able to achieve much more um with your finances than you might have been able to do alone or like maybe you've had such a successful year um, in finances and business and career that you're able to make a big purchase that you really, really enjoy and brings you a lot of joy. You know what I mean? Like I see an elevation of finances this year if you embody um, this alignment with success, okay? So next card out, we have your health and your well-being this year. And we have the Queen of Stones in reversed bear. Alrighty, folks. Um, it is really important <laughs> to not be lazy this year, okay? Um, the Queen of Stones does represent a person. It does represent you, because this is your health, your well-being. And I feel like the shadow attributes of the Queen of Stones, Queen of Pentacles, um, can kind of be living a little bit too much in the lap of luxury. <laughs> and this can just warn against like overeating, for example, or not moving your body enough. As we see here, the bear is an animal that hibernates and bulks up, right? Um, so it's just kind of warning against um, becoming imbalanced but it's also warning against going in the opposite direction you know bears have their summers where they run around and breed and eat fruit right uh live a very active life but they also have the winters which they hibernate and rest and so this card when it's coming out in reverse it's saying you're imbalanced in some way so it's reminding you yes take that time to rest and make sure you are clearing your mind and restoring your body but on the other hand make sure you're also exercising and moving and all that i got the message for some of you that if you've been going to the gym specifically looking to you know get your gains or whatever um spirit is asking are you taking time to sleep and rest because that's actually when your muscles build and grow you know it's not when you're at the gym that your muscles get bigger it's actually when you're sleeping that your muscles repair themselves and get bigger right same thing with your mental health like i can like the biggest easiest simplest thing you can do right now to improve your mental health is get enough sleep if you're not already all right so queen of stones reversed is kind of um saying that you know your your health might need a little bit more attention that you've been giving it um in 2023 you know make sure you're resting make sure you're staying active at a nice balanced scale and yeah, because I, I just feel like you might have been neglecting that. If you haven't been going to the doctor regularly um, or the dentist or whatever, uh, this is also a sign you should do that, um, especially if you're the type of person who's constantly taking care of the people around you. It's really important for you to take care of yourself, okay? Mama Bear can't be the lovely mother that she is if she doesn't hibernate and get her berries and stuff like that, okay? So I think you, that area of life can use a lot more attention this year. Make sure you see all your annual doctors annually, right? Um, and just take better care of yourself, guys, for, for sure. Uh, so your spiritual energy and inner fulfillment in 2023 is being represented by the seer. Very spiritual, guys. Ooh, you are awakening psychically philosophically your wanderlust and power some of you guys are practicing witchcraft uh law of attraction uh mediumship a lot more seriously this year this is like the perfect card for this um space of your spiritual energy and inner fulfillment you guys many of you are healers many of you are seers you see the past present and future very clearly you see how you can summon whatever energies you want guys these are the two divine feminine cards of the tarot you have the high priestess and the empress the seer and the green woman and we also have the the bear which is a very powerful divine feminine animal and it's coming out twice actually i just realized so guys you can manifest a lot this year your connection to spirit and source is getting so much more powerful than you even can fathom right now like this is ridiculous um, 
So I, I just really, really strongly, I feel like reading this from the book actually, hold your horses. The time has come to focus your power and let it flow through you. Many dreams or desires related to the creative emotional process are ready to be applied in your day-to-day -day life and you must now give vent to those hidden and suppressed longings. This may also relate to healing, sexual relationships, or partnerships. Now, the manifestation of inner spiritual or esoteric insights into your practical and physical daily life will bring profound rewards and results. It is a sign of maturity. The seer also relates to creative impulses such as art, mechanical skills and crafts, and the joy of bringing pleasure and knowledge to others. Guys, really powerful stuff. Oh, I just got the song. When I get the feeling, I want sexual healing. Um, guys, big, 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 big year for manifestation. And I like you have done so much maturing in 2022 that the seeds that you planted in the years prior, even in like 2021, 2022, 2019, 2018 are coming to fruition this year because of all the maturing you've been doing. And we see just like especially when it comes to romantic partnerships and creative projects and businesses. Those two areas of life are so huge for you this year. So huge. Like we can see marriage or celebration of some kind. We can see like profound success when it comes to money and career. Like this is a really like a raw, natural, spiritual energy completely connected to the divinity within earth and and spirit like you are a medium you are this physical and spiritual embodiment of like the bridge which connects the energetic realms and the physical realms and you are using and because your spirit is vibrating at the frequency of being this spiritual bridge you are able to manifest and bring so many ideas from spirit into physical and you can bring so much physical energy and like prayers and affirmations and stuff into the spiritual realms and it's like this constant dance back and forth that allows you to sing your reality into existence and I, you're just really, really powerful this year, guys. So definitely do affirmations, spells, witchcraft, wizardry. I don't know, whatever you want to do. And connect with your guides while doing it because you are like a full-blown shamanic seer, practitioner, green woman, abundant, beautiful. Like that, long story short, you're manifesting big things this year, guys. <laughs> okay, so... What you most need to focus on for the year ahead is, ooh, two of vessels attraction. Yeah, again, we see a really powerful romantic sexual relationship here. Also friendships, all right? Really, really important. Your relationships are super duper fulfilling this year because of all the maturing you did. You let go of resentment from the past. You've gained some uh, good karma for yourself. And you put yourself into a place where you no longer have codependent relationships or friendships. You put yourself into a place where you can connect with another soul as two fulfilled individuals connecting together. And oh man, some of y'all are getting married this year or engaged or moving in or moving up in the world. Okay, new best friend energy. Like there is some significant soulmate relationship um, going on in 2023 for sure. Or even just meeting this person if you feel like you haven't. Wow. So it's really important for you to make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people because that affects your energy like more than anything. All right. And the right influences, even online, you know. Um, your most important lesson in the upcoming year is the Knight of Vessels, the Eel. Ooh. So this also has to do with your relationships and your creative projects. And this talks about not being so finicky with it, not choosing finicky partners and people and friends who are here one minute, gone the next. Um, and I, I really feel like a big lesson is kind of stabilizing your own energy when it comes to romance and friendships and creative projects, you know, creating a nice, consistent schedule for yourself. You know, the night of vessels in reverse is someone um, that comes in really strong, wanting to sweep you off your feet and make love to you. And then they're gone the next day um, or like a creative idea that comes in and sweeps you off your feet. You spend 
thousands of dollars on this project, on this business idea, and then the next day you lost all motivation and you don't do anything about it. Um, if we are breaking out of that energy, this year has the theme, the lesson of breaking out of that energy and teaching you how to harness um, that passion in a more consistent and healthy and stable way. So I really um, like to see that for you. And that's why we have the two of vessels here, the king of uh, vessels here, the four of wands. These are all cards of celebrating longevity, celebrating our soul tribe, our home, our family, our accomplishments. Um, no more finicky here one day, go on the next energy. And then your final tarot card before we get into messages from spirit is where you're heading in the next 12 months overall. And you have the ace of arrows, the breath of life, a whole new direction, guys, a whole new direction. There is a new beginning happening this uh, this year that will completely change the rest of your life. Like I said, some of you guys are getting married. You're going from single life to married life. And that opens up a whole new door of, of ideas and opportunities for you, or you're going from broke to, to rich. And that opens up so many new ideas for you. You might be making a big move. You have new friendships in your, in your life with people who enjoy doing certain things you've never even thought about doing and they introduce you to it. And that opens up a whole new door for you. Like, you know what I mean? There is just this profoundly positive energy of newness, new direction, and just peace coming through this year. You've done so much maturing in 2022 that you are able to embody the energy of peace and understand you don't have to know the full picture right now. You just have to follow your intuition in the present moments. And you've done forgiving and you've you've grown and you've opened your heart up to new things. You know, you, you went out of your comfort zone. You're embracing going out of your comfort zone and letting new people in and being more conscious about the people that you surround yourself with. And all of these factors are contributing to a whole new positive, beautiful reality that you manifested. It is just stunning. You put yourself into alignment and here is the results. By the end of 2023, your life's going to look so different. <laughs> okay. Like there is such a beautiful, beautiful new doorways opening up for you. So let's finish off by getting some messages from your spirit guides here. Uh, this is from your spirit team as a whole, all your ancestors, angels, all that. They are saying, receive. You are a kind and loving soul who constantly reaches out and gives to others, but now it is a time for you to learn how to graciously receive. Just as with the ebb and flow of the tides, the art of giving and receiving is the natural law and order of the universe. It's time for you to receive. It's time for you to get what's yours. All of the kind deeds that you did in the past, all of the unconditional love you've shown others in the past, it is returning to you now. All of the hard work you've put into yourself and your mentality and your maturity, it is paying off in 2023. This is a really positive year for you. So accept the love that other people have to offer. Accept the new energy that other people have to offer and, and learn the art of receiving. This just reminded me of that song by Ariana Grande where she's like, I'm getting good at receiving, still getting used to not leaving. Uh, point of view. It's called point of view. Go listen to point of view by Ariana Grande. There might be some messages there for you. And then last but not least, your postcard from spirit, a little message they have for you. Let's read it. Dearest you, you have a unique purpose and destiny that only you can fulfill. But first, you need to know that destiny isn't a destination. You don't arrive at some special place where poof, you're perfect and happy all the time. It's about establishing and firming up a commitment to a certain experience, whatever form that takes. Your soul knows what you need to experience. Your destiny is to be present to all of life's adventures, to discover your talents and full potential through allowing inspiration to lead you and to risk standing apart from the crowd to listen to your soul. You are special as much as you are also paradoxically one with the world, individual yet part of a great whole. Both truths have led you to this moment where we are saying you are on the right track. Even if your ego self doesn't see that, listen to your soul, check in with spirit, keep going. Spirit loves you, life loves you, we love you. This is such a really good confirmation message from everything we've already picked up on. It's like a big theme here, especially with the moon on the water, and with Smoky Mirror especially, is that 
you don't know what's in store for you this year. You don't have all the answers, but you are learning how to embrace that fact and just let the universe take care of you and let the universe guide you on this beautiful life journey and see where it takes you. And instead of worrying so much about the destination, instead of worrying so much about achieving your goal in order to be happy, you are learning to be happy right here in the present moment. You are learning to be at peace right here in the present moment, listening to your intuitive nudges, listening to your your intuition to your guides to the signs and allowing that to guide you and because you're finding peace here in the present moment it magically unlocks the future in which you were trying to manifest anyways or something even better so it's such a paradox in that way but you're stepping into this energy of being okay with not knowing what's going to happen next and being at peace and at ease with that very meditative energy okay beautiful stuff guys thank you for joining me like share comment and subscribe if you want the personal 2023 tarot and mediumship reading again that is on my website spiritpsychic.org a hundred dollars it's 30 minutes minimum but i mean if we're being honest most of the time it's like an hour long because i'm just crazy and obsessed and coffee um, addicted so go ahead and check that out and i will see you for the next reading here on youtube bye okay group number two you selected the red jasper which is a really grounding and cooling stone that helps recenter you in your body improve circulation and it just really helps you ground your energies into the physical realm so it's a really lovely stone to work with very purifying so this first card is going to represent your overall spiritual theme and lesson of 2023 i find that when i do year ahead readings there tends to be like an overall spiritual theme that people are going through and if you apply this theme to every area of your life uh, you will see some growth and some improvements. So your theme that the universe is teaching you in 2023 is water. So the spirit of water itself is going to act as a powerful guide for you. Also, I got the message some of you guys might be going on a significant trip involving water. Um, think like oceans or rivers or lakes. Um, and there might be some significant developments in your life that happen on that trip or because of that trip. Or maybe it's just going to be really... Um, purifying time for you. Maybe you'll get some ideas that will change your life um, while being around water. So water is very, very important this year. But also make sure you're drinking plenty of it. But the essence of water from the book is water symbolizes purification, regeneration, birth, revival, and cleansing. Uh, very similar to what the uh, red jasper um, represents as well, interestingly enough. It signifies an evolutionary shift from former self to new self. Many myths around the world speak of a great flood and the new life that is revealed after a deluge. Deluge? Uh, water begins without boundaries. Then, as soon as form has separated itself from water, it comes under the laws of time and life, thus acquiring limitations. When you get this card upright, it is the universe kind of inviting you to embrace some new energies this year, and this is the invitation. When water arrives, you're invited to watch your emotions, know they are going to be changeable, and do not settle on a conclusion at this time. If you feel joy, feel it fully. If you feel sad, allow sadness to move through you. Water invites you to see the ebb and flow of events and trust you can ride the wave of opportunity when it arises. Natural flow is here, go with it. So go with the flow. I feel like the year of 2023 is teaching you how to not become so attached to your emotions and allow them to flow, which is a similar message that group number one had, um, where you're kind of asked to just embrace each, emo each moment and each emotion as they are and not cling on so tightly to it and allow it to, really control your life. I feel like in 2023, oh, actually, I feel like towards the end of 2022, you've been practicing the art and the skill of emotional regulation. And I feel that emotional regulation is a big sign of maturity. When you're able to experience your emotions fully, but not let them allow you to say things in the heat of a moment, you know, allowing your emotions to come through and pausing before you speak on them and being very dignified is such an important skill to have and it's a skill that a lot of people don't have um and i feel like those are one of those skills where um the saying you know age does not equate to maturity uh, really makes sense because i've met people of all ages who are very emotionally unregulated and just allow 
each fleeting emotion to control their lives and to control the conversation and just kind of be the sails of the ship of life for them. Um, but when you get a handle on your emotions, and this doesn't mean like suppressing your emotions or being happy all the time, but more so allowing your emotions to rise up, allowing your creative ideas to rise up and acknowledge them and sit with them and feel them, but not act off of them. That is what gives you a lot of power. And you can really sit and analyze each and every moment, each and every emotion as it comes up and figure out where they're coming from and get to the root of them. And then over time, evenly temper yourself out until you are this person who is very calm and gentle and and at peace with yourself instead of being very emotionally volatile all of the time. You know, your peaks and valleys kind of go... Uh, and they transform into little tiny hills and little tiny divots, you know what I mean? Um, and you're just a very calm, regulated person overall. So I feel that there's a lot of emotional healing coming for you in the year 2023 that you've already begun doing. You're turning into a calmer person. And also uh, water represents love and romance and creativity as well. So it's an important year for all of those things also. So pay attention to the ideas that come up as they come up, the lessons that come up and go with the flow that the universe is bringing you. So let's take a look at the tarot and get a deeper insight into your year ahead. So the first card is going to represent 2022 actually, this previous year as a whole and just what happened as a whole. <laughs> we have the Ace of Arrows, the Breath of Life. This is really interesting because this was the last card for group number one. This is, uh, this past year, 2022, has been a very new beginning for you. Um, new directions, new people, new ideas, new communication. It's pretty positive. You might have seen some positive forward movement in your life in some way or another, in your, ro your relationships. I was going to say your romance, so maybe romantic relationships, uh, forward movement um in any goals that you've had forward movement in socializing especially the arrows represent like talking communicating new ideas forward momentum towards you know a better life so this is a really good card to represent this previous year of 2022 our second card out is going to represent what you have learned from 2022. We have the Knight of Vessels, Eel. Ooh, this goes back to water. So the vessels are the cups, represents water, lots of emotional forward movement. I wonder if some of you guys have a significant romantic relationship um, that has been changing a lot this past year. Um, maybe some of you guys went, got into a breakup and kind of restarted or have been dating or met someone new or just experiencing some type of shifts and changes in the emotional waters of life, um, especially like romantic. I definitely feel like your social dynamics, your social relationships, whether platonic, familial, or romantic have been changing a lot and you've just been kind of following this current and seeing where it goes but the knight of vessels um, does represent someone who really cherishes you who really loves you so um, if you have someone like that in your life good for you um, I feel like this past year has been one where you both have been learning so much from each other and developing with each other and just having really deep conversations. I'm also seeing some of you actually got therapy this year or did a lot of inner healing work. Like I'm seeing a lot of emotional maturing and learning how to navigate the emotional waters a lot better. Like I keep coming back to this theme of healthy emotional regulation and coping skills and communication and relationships and having the tools that you need to not get hurt in love again, to not get deeply damaged in love again, to not give all your power away in love again. Um, so there's been a massive amount of maturing um, in that area, which is just wonderful. I wish everyone could just spend a year really <laughs> learning the art, the skill of emotional regulation, healthy communication, and how to have healthy relationships. And that's something that you definitely did in 2022 um, with some people in your life and you overcame some challenges and you got closer in the process. Or maybe you found yourself in the process and you learned the skills necessary to not 
fall into toxic relationships again. And I, I'm, I've never seen this in this card before. This is actually my first tarot deck. I've had this deck for years. I've never seen this in this card. There is a knife kind of, um, what's it called? Imprinted into this rock. And knives can represent cutting out the toxicity in life, cutting out things that no longer work for us. And specifically, this is cutting out some emotional connections, cutting out some people from your life who are not good for you or some behaviors that were not good for you. So that we, whatever you learned in 2022 has given you the skill set to have healthy relationships and to completely prevent toxic ones from forming again. And this is a skill that you will have for the rest of your life. So that was very much worth the time and investment. All right. Uh, question three, what you aspire to be in 2023 in the next 12 months? We have the two of stones reversed challenge. Okay. Overcoming challenges is definitely a big theme here, but also kind of becoming more calm, becoming more centered. I feel like um, one thing that's on your mind right now might actually be your family. Uh, might actually be some people in your life who you feel obligated to stick around and work things out with, but you don't see eye to eye to with them or you just don't know if they're a good influence in your life and um I'm, I'm seeing here hmm very specific messages 2023 some of you guys might have the goal of coming clean to your family uh coming out in some way about who you really are and perhaps there's been some fear there um because you're afraid they might judge you and this could be in any area you know maybe your family doesn't know you're into tarot and spiritual things or maybe your friends don't or maybe you're in an unusual relationship or maybe you're just very free thinking and you come from like a conservative family you know what i mean like there might be some people in your life we want to come clean with um without having a challenge or if you are dealing with some challenging people and situations you hope that throughout the year you can get to calmer waters or get some type of clarity with this because I feel like <laughs> I just got a funny message. So it's like this past year, 2022, um, you've been learning so much about emotional maturity and stuff. You've been learning so much about how to have healthy relationships. And it's almost like you're reaching the final boss. And this could be like your own parents, your own mother, your own father. <laughs> who's very judgmental towards you or something like that or like your boss or something and you're <laughs> you're looking to create a a healthy relationship there or to just completely let go in general um i really get this theme of wanting to be free wanting to not feel like you have to wear a mask anymore by the end of the year not feeling like you have to filter your thoughts and opinions and beliefs, um, to live freely, to live autonomously and to be proud of your life and out about your life. You know, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this card. Um, Two of stones also represents balance. So we see a goal here um, that could be involving like money as well, um, paying off debts, balancing your checkbooks, you know what I mean? Um, going from a place of deficit to a place of abundance where you are making more money and you can actually save. I actually just saw a graphic on Instagram today of all places that showed that um, this past year, 2022, has been one of the worst years for saving um, in decades. One of the lowest years that Americans have been saving their money. Um, a very small percentage of Americans were able to save some money in 2022 due to the very high inflation rates. And so I'm seeing here one of your goals for, and I'm not saying everyone's American, obviously, I know more than half of you aren't, um, but uh, this could have a financial element as well, looking to pay off all of your debts if you have any and save up some money. And I'm also seeing uh, this doesn't have to just be financial. This could be physical in any in any way. Creating a better work-life balance, a better 
um, productivity, family time, balance in your life. Um, so yeah, we're seeing this desire to be more balanced with work, with play, to be out and open about every aspect of your life, not ha having to hide any parts of yourself from anyone and having peaceful relationships with everyone in your life. Uh, who respect you, um, even those who might be of older generations, more set in their ways, um, more conservative people around you, you know, looking to cultivate that respectful, you know, not judging each other type of energy. And if that is impossible, um, I'm actually seeing you've been thinking like, are they even worth keeping in my life? Which is a very serious thought. So you're looking to have all this resolved by the end of the year, which is a really good goal. So question four is what empowers you in reaching these aspirations? And you have the nine of stones tradition. Ooh, interesting, interesting card. This talks about bringing wisdom from the past into this very present moment and in the traditional, this would be like the, the Nine of Pentacles, which is a card of being able to take care of yourself independently, make sure all your needs are met, to you know make sure that you're happy with your hobbies and who you are, and just really embracing your individuality. And I almost feel like some of you, what a lot, most of you, all of you watching, <laughs> I would say, um, suffers with this thing where you feel like some of your opinions and life choices might be unusual. So you don't want to like come clean about them or be very out and open about them until you are successful, until you can kind of feel like you're worthy of being out and open. And that is not a good mindset to be in. Spirit's kind of saying here that success will come when you don't need it, when you don't need to be successful um, in order to feel like you're worthy of being liked and respected, that is when success is going to come, you know? When you're still building your success, whatever that looks like for you, and you do not care what other people feel or think about you, you know, you're, you're going to go after your dreams, even though they're a work in progress. Um, that's when success is most likely to come to you. You know, you're just putting yourself out there. You're being yourself. You're being authentic. You're not hiding anything. You're in a state of receptivity with the universe. Um, whereas, you know, some people like, oh, I see this a lot with um, creative entrepreneurs, actually, who are afraid that they will be judged for their work, you know, and so they don't even put it out there because they don't want anybody to see it until they've got like a million, um, you know, customers or readers or viewers or whatever, whatever it is you're trying to attract. They, they're not going to tell their family or friends until they're already like super successful and you know, thriving at this. And it's just like, okay, well, when you have that subconscious fear of like your close ones seeing something that you are passionate about, that can actually prevent success in that area from happening because you're in this energetic state of wanting to hide that away from the world. So I think you will notice that when you become more out and open um, with everyone in your life and you feel free, you know, they like all of your closest people to you your friends, your family, whatever, they know the real you. They know the authentic you. You're in a state of authenticity and peace and you have nothing to hide. That is when you're an energetic match to having success and being seen. Because I'm, I'm seeing like an element here of some of your goals is being seen. I don't know if you have like a blog or a podcast or a YouTube or social media accounts or if you're a writer or if you want to be more popular in your career or your social group, like there is an element in your life and your goals that involve being seen, being respected, being acknowledged, um, being popular. And you're not going to achieve that when you are hiding from certain individuals from your life. So it's like a divine spiritual link between keeping yourself in the closet, not being authentic with um, those around you and not being seen by the public. You know, there's an energetic link to that, even if it feels like they're totally unrelated. Okay. So that might be something that you work to overcome. And I would say, try to do that um, as soon as possible, because a lot of growth will happen after you come clean. I mean, like once you're in a safe space um, where you can take care of your own needs, um, then, you know, just be your raw, authentic self with people, you know, like, so for example, like, let's just say you're super gay <laughs> and your parents don't know that your family doesn't know that. Um, 
and you feel like they're very conservative, they might react negatively. Um, definitely make sure that you're like in a place where you can support yourself, like living on your own, totally fine before you come clean to them. You know what I mean? So that way you're not putting yourself in harm's way, putting yourself in a position to be homeless or something. You know, that's what the cards are saying. Like take care of your own needs and then when those needs are taken care of um, independently, then just be your authentic self with everyone in your life if, we, if it feels right. And if they have a problem with it, boom, get rid of them. I don't care if you're related to them. I really don't. Some of you guys who pick group number two, you're actually wondering, like, should I disown my family? <laughs> like, should I stop talking to my family? I wonder what happened there with you. Uh, this obviously won't be a message for everyone, clearly, but I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I just feel like hiding consumes more energy than just being authentic and having to lose some people over that. So question five is, what may stand in the way of you reaching your aspirations? And we have the guardian. Mm, look at that. It's really interesting that this is asking, you know, the, this is representing what stands in your way of reaching your aspirations. And we literally have a card that depicts a cave leading to the underworld, which is a place of great answers and it keeps all information um, of the world and, and many other secrets to humanity and, and there's literally something standing in the way and that is this skeleton here death you know it is a guardian a protector of what lies beneath so i want to i went to go actually read what this means from the book the, bro the book to this um, tarot deck is very profound. It's the Wildwood Tarot. Again, first tarot deck I ever had. Beautiful, beautiful um, deck. Highly recommend getting it. Um, let me read it for you because it's actually quite insane how it totally resonates with all the other cards we got. A challenge has arrived in your life. The situation may be very complex. It may even have profound implications for your life and how you deal with the world. It may manifest itself in the form of a profound inner realignment or the facing of some physical outer predicament, whether from the labyrinth that is the human mind or from some external source, the challenge that presents itself now must be seen for what it is, an opportunity. If something has been hidden or repressed, if a situation has been left to decay or become unhealthy, now is the time to take control of your fears and deal with the insecurity with courage and integrity, Always be aware that however threatening or difficult this situation is, you can only become stronger and more resilient from the experience of understanding and accepting inner darkness. So there is this call for you to be truthful. There is this call for you to go into the depths of your own mind and figure out where these fears and darknesses are coming from. And you're really being asked to bring everything to the light that's the theme here bringing things to the light will empower you in 2023 so don't keep any secrets or truths about yourself hidden from the people around you from yourself from the public you know it's time to bring your own psyche to the light and do some shadow work do some some inner healing work like i i just keep hearing the the phrase on repeat bring it to the light bring it to the light bring it to the light tell the truth be truthful be honest come out um it, it's just very profound that is your obstacle is fear your obstacle is not being willing to have harder discussions Mm. Not being willing to dive deep into what issues reside that need to be overcome. And here's the thing. I feel like you already started this journey because with the Knight of Vessels, this was showing us that in 2022, you really had some deep conversations with people and you overcame so much emotionally. Like you learned how to be emotionally mature and open up and all that. And I feel like this journey is only continuing in 2023 and you're continuing to become more mature. And it's like, like we said, you're reaching the final boss. <laughs> and I see that here as well. Like you're reaching the final boss to just being in the light, you know? I actually can see this as you've been going through shadow work, you've been in the depths of your own mind, and you're about to come out 
back up to the surface into the light and this is like your final boss you know this is like the final person you're terrified of having um serious conversations with but you need to be strong and you need to be resilient and trust that you can take care of yourself no matter what and you have all of the tools that you need and also with this card i see that your ancestors are on your side right now mm. Many of you have ancestors that were very close with nature, you know, we all have indigenous ancestors, no matter what continent you reside from. And those people were in touch with magic and the magic of nature and the ancient wisdom. And many, many, many of them were ridiculed and suppressed for that. And call upon these ancestors at this time, call upon your ancestors that were persecuted for whatever they were persecuted for and ask for their strength ask for their protection ask for their wisdom to be yourself loud and proud and to remain protected while doing it that will be a really great source for you um a great source of strength for you at this time connect with your ancestors with tradition um you can set up an altar for them offer like an offering uh although honestly like your ancestors are always here to support you like they have personal interest vested in your well-being you know you're carrying out their lineage their dna their goals um you're doing the inner healing work to break um negative cycles and yeah they're they're like your ancestors are coming through really strongly in this reading so sixth card out we have your relationships and emotions in the coming year and you have the pole star it did come out in reversed so uh this card definitely represents a dream a manifestation that you're looking to have when it comes to your relationships this year okay some of you guys might have the dream of having a family or being married or just having someone in general or uh, having your soul tribe of friends that you really resonate with in reverse you know this is saying you're doubting your ability to manifest that and there's no need to doubt like there is definitely strong possibility of developments happening here or you know whenever i i think of like the pole star the star um in tarot it really does represent um being aligned with certain ideas and goals that spirit sends you because you're one who can manifest it so when it comes out in reverse it's almost like you're doubting your connection to your spirit guides you're doubting um your ability to manifest your hopes and wishes and stop stop doubting it you know also i'm seeing like aquarius energy might be really strong around you in 2023 in your relationships and friendships so you might be connecting with a lot of aquarius folks sun moon rising possibly venus okay uh aquarius season might be very significant for you when it comes to relationships as well so that will be at the end of january beginning of february so look out for any relationship developments during that time there might be a a wish fulfillment that comes through at that time you know so you might get into a relationship you might move in with someone get proposed to you might meet a new friend who's very significant a new person who's very significant go on a lot of dates like that's just i i feel that aquarius season of 2023 is going to be really really important for you in terms of relationships and friendships and aquarius does rule over groups and friends so that isn't totally shocking to me um just be open to it and say yes to it that's that's the one thing okay so next we are diving in also i want to mention this is a major arcana so your relationships are continuing to be a major major um theme of 2023 as well like developments happening there lots of personal growth and also i feel like this is giving me this vision of like you're on your own path in life and the relationships and friendships you have it's just we're all walking each other back to our higher selves you know what i mean that's life as time goes on time is like a path in in the forest and you know the way we walk this path is totally unique to us the twists and turns we take are completely unique to us and at some points on those journey on this journey you will walk um right beside other people um and 
I don't know, I'm just really seeing that visualization here with the pole star. And you might have been feeling like you were walking alone for a really long time. But in 2023, there is a wish fulfillment coming through and you will no longer be walking alone. So I definitely see some major um, friendships and connections and a relationship uh, coming forward at this time they might even already be in your life and they continue to develop in 2023 so that is something to look forward to um, next we have your work your career and your finances for 2023 and we have 10 of arrows instruction okay so this is a really big card involving school and learning and knowledge just straight up so if your career involves um, teaching of any kind uh, it's going to be a blessed year for you if you are in school if you are a student again blessed year for you lots of um, forward movement there and also i even if you're in an established career I see you learning a new skill. Some of you guys might have had the idea to get a certain certification. This is a sign that yes, you should do that. Or maybe even a certain degree if it's been heavily on your mind. Yes, do it. Um, also, some of you guys just might even be profiting off of a skill that you have learned and you're continuing to learn that skill and you're making lots of money doing it. And that's a very strong message when in conjunction with the Nine of Stones over here, which is traditionally a card of profiting off of your skills and hobbies so i definitely feel like you are deepening deepening your craft your skills your knowledge um not only are you maturing but like i don't know i'm just getting the vibe of 2023 for so many of us involves a lot of learning like a lot of sagittarius energy a lot of learning okay so um even beyond your job and work maybe you've just been wanting to learn new skills like for example if you wanted to learn a new language um in 2023 like that's one of your goals learning that language can actually end up leading you to making more money you might move to a country that speaks that language and there is a lot more career opportunities there you might be able to put on your resume that you're bi tri quadlingual lingual <laughs> and that can increase the amount of money you make there you might even become a teacher in language like you know what i mean there is a skill that you are perfecting and as you perfect it you teach it to others and you can totally profit off of that all right i feel like people who select the group number two you're kind of giving me this energy of um someone who is a student and teacher of life as you learn life skills you have this natural inclination to share those life skills with other people, whether you're paid or not. And that's also how you learn best as well, by sharing with others. So that's a really big part of your journey here. Um, also, like if you're in a job, you might actually be training some people or being trained for a new job. I'm just seeing this big energy of teaching and learning, okay? Um, which is definitely going to be a worthwhile investment in the long run. Some of you guys might be taking on a new assistant or um, what's the word, like an intern or uh, apprentice with something. All right. We have our next one up is your health and well-being in 2023. Eight of arrow, eight of arrow struggle. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> no way to uh, sugarcoat this one. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to be on the struggle bus this year. I am saying, though, that your health and well-being is an area of life that you should not be neglecting, okay? Um, this is a card of, like, feeling like it's one thing after another, you know? She's in a deep winter. It is very windy. She is chilled. She is being attacked at all angles it seems by arrows and you know she's on the struggle bus but you know she still has her lantern of hope here she's still moving forward and that's kind of a similar vibe that i'm getting for you <laughs> guys it's really important to take care of yourself this year um also this isn't just your health and well-being you might notice some people around you um and only take this if it resonates uh may be struggling with their health at this time and you might act as like their source of guiding hope, their lantern here. And caregiving for others and giving hope to others um, can be very draining, could be very taxing. So especially if you're in a caregiver role, taking care of someone else's health and well-being, it is so important for you to take care of yourself even more so than you would if you weren't taking care of someone else. You get me? All right, so if you're in a field 
I'm seeing some nurses here, um, where you are giving to other people, caregiving other people, and also like teaching other nurses and stuff like that. Um, it's really, 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 really important to take all of your time off, all of your vacations, take care of yourself. Please, okay, <laughs> please. Mm, especially if it is your own health that's struggling, like do everything, everything, everything that you can to just not overwhelm yourself, to just take a moment and focus on your health, you know? There's no shame in that. Okay, so next up, we have your spiritual energy and inner fulfillment, and we have the moon on water. This is a very spiritual card. Um, and also we have a full moon here, which is just full psychic intuition and connection. I'm not surprised um, that you got this card because you are watching a tarot reading and obviously you are spiritually connected and aligned with the messages that your spirit guides have to say. Wow, this is deep. Um, I'm seeing like deep meditations connecting with spirit animals in particular, like getting a power animal. You can do a meditation shamanic journey or talk with a psychic or some type of shamanic practitioner, seer, high priestess or whatever to get to know your spirit animals, your power animals, your ancestors, your guides a bit better. Um, I always recommend cultivating your own connection with your spirit guides and awakening your own psychic abilities. Um, there is a lot of spiritual fulfillment uh, this year though because I feel that even though you cannot see where you're going this year fully you cannot fully predict what's going to happen in the future your intuition is on point so you will be making strong intuitive decisions that will keep you on the right path this year and i really want to emphasize that you're going to be on the right path this year there's nothing to fear there with that like this is the perfect card that could have came out um, for this position other than the seer which came out for group number one um, because it really shows like yeah you might not be able to predict where this year's heading because it's going to head in some very interesting directions for you that are you know meant to be surprises but all along the journey like you're connected to your guides and your intuition is on a point okay and you're going to make the decision to follow that intuition and you're, you're just going to stay on a really good path this year so and feel very fulfilled spiritually because of it and in your life like you're totally making the right decisions here Next is what you most need to focus on this year ahead. And you have the Four of Bows celebration. Having fun time with friends. This card also came out for group number one. I'm seeing lots of weddings and proposals and um, housewarming parties and like just connecting with, with social life again. So many people are reawakening their social life and learning to celebrate life again and feast again and and love again and this is something that you need to focus on more having more fun and just letting loose and experiencing dance you know especially with this struggle card coming out as your health and well-being you know i feel like you might be focusing a bit too much on the negative a bit too much on the stress and when you dance and when you laugh and when you um just in, indulge in this energy we see here it's like the healing balm to your soul it is like literally dancing reinvigorates your solar plexus chakra which definitely rolls over your health and your well-being and your energy and this card right here really shows me like low solar plexus energy just being cold and and struggling and tired like that is low solar plexus chakra energy and this here is high energy you know uh notice how they are just being themselves and again it's that authenticity again they're not trying to cover themselves up they're not trying to be someone they're not they are surrounded by people who are like-minded who are they're celebrating each other for who they are they're not surrounding themselves with people who are judging them they're not surrounding themselves with people who don't get it when you put yourself into these communities of like-minded folks you can really 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 be yourself and it's just like again like we said healing balm to your soul um, so that's something you want to focus on this this year is literally just having fun and socializing and putting yourself out there and, and reinvigorating yourself and living life to the fullest especially is a big theme that's coming through this year. We also have uh, what, mo what, what is your most important lesson in the coming year? What's the thing you're going to learn? And we have the Queen of Bows in reversed hair. Mm. So... 
Also, I see the full moon again. The Queen of Bows or the Queen of Arrows. Or, oh my god, the Queen of Bows or the Queen of Wands. Sorry. Um, it really is someone who's warm and fun and charming and charismatic and they have a really strong vision for what they want in life um and they're very like they use their charm to kind of manifest that you know they bring people together to share in this shared vision and they work well with others so i feel like your biggest lesson in this coming year is first off i i just want to say like trusting your own vision trusting that you know your authenticity is your power and the things that you want aren't weird you're not weird like nobody is weird you're just surrounded by people who are judging you okay <laughs> um you're being surrounded by people who are like the queen of of bows and reversed which are just very harshly critical and unwilling to put in the work to have a healthy relationship you know also we have hairs coming out twice here we have bunnies rabbits whatever you want to call them coming out twice in your reading so they are definitely a spirit guide for you i can totally see that um having rabbits as a spirit guide definitely does show that First off, you have very like innocent intentions. You know, you're a very kind person. Um, it also shows a lot of vigor, a lot of um, life force energy, sexuality, sensuality. Um, but also I feel like in your past, you've definitely fallen prey to narcissists most likely. And um, one of the lessons here is to, like you've been learning how to protect yourself from toxic relationships. And I feel like you're continuing that lesson in 2023 because i i feel like with this card coming out there might be like uh, just one person maybe two who just and i feel like for so many of you it's family related they just don't get you and respect you and it's frustrating and i feel like this year is looking to resolve that energy mm even if this person's not in your life anymore like even if your mother for example constantly told you or like judged you your whole life even if they're your mother's not in your life anymore you know how are you judging yourself internally how have you turned the voice of your mother into your own inner vo voice and how can we undo that how can we be kinder to ourselves and others and be less judgmental and more respectful and open and truly go after the things we want in life with vigor and be surrounded by the people we love um without shame you know your your biggest lesson this year is to not be afraid of being judged there's a lot of aquarius energy in your reading Aquarius is the weirdo of the zodiac and but ironically it's also ruling over friendships and so I think those two things go hand in hand like when you surround yourself with loving people who don't judge who accept you for who you are who support you who celebrate the highs and lows of life with you you're just empowered to make bolder and better decisions whereas if you're surrounding yourself with people who constantly bring challenge and judgment into your life i mean you're more likely to be scared and live like a, a life that's very timid and on edge you know that's the shadow side of the rabbit and i think your biggest lesson this year is just to kind of empower yourself in that way so final tarot card before we get some channeled messages is where you're heading in the next 12 months overall and we have the nine of arrows in reverse dedication dedication not giving up continuing to grow and support yourself and not give in to those judgments yeah you're almost there i'm almost there almost there uh that's from the princess and the frog <laughs> really great movie it might uh, have some messages for you there that's probably my favorite disney princess movie um and I love that song. It means a lot to me. I totally resonated with it when I first saw that movie, um, being a business owner myself. Um, 
Anyways, <laughs> where you're going overall this year is just staying loyal to yourself, your authenticity, and continuing to grow and better your life and surround yourself with really good people. Like, I feel like there are a lot of things that are leveling up in your life. The people you surround yourself with, um, the environments you're in, your sense of abundance, your health, your well being, like, you're kind of staying true to yourself, gro your self growth, self love, self dedication journey here. And like, I don't know why I keep wanting to go back to this theme of letting go of narcissists and just really healing from that and really taking care of yourself and really growing. And I absolutely adore this energy for you. There's going to be a lot of blessings this year if you encapsulate the energy given in this reading. You know, I feel like your self-confidence has taken a hit throughout life dealing with these people whoever they may be and this is the year of restoring that confidence and following your dreams i feel like part of you doesn't follow your dreams because you have this inner voice given to you by other people that tells you that you're not good enough or that tells you that you're weird or whatever and you're like learning how to let go of that i am telling you guys pause the video right now and call out to your ancestors that have been persecuted, prosecuted, um, judged, shamed, burned at the stake, crucified, whatever in the past. Call upon those ancestors to give you strength to be yourself and to protect you. Mm. Just ask out loud, hey ancestors who have been through these things and, and see what visuals come to your head when you ask that as well. Because that nine times out of ten will show you exactly what those ancestors went through. Um, even if there's no historical documentation, that's how mediumship works. Out loud, ask those ancestors to come through and help guide you in life. And see how drastically your life changes, okay? That's what I ask you to do. Now, let's get into some final messages from your spirit guides. Speaking of, maybe some of those ancestors will now come forward to talk to you. And let's ask them what messages they have. They have love. Mm, good year for love. Love is the foundation of your existence. And you're just as worthy of receiving as you are of giving love and compassion. While love can be a beautiful emotion, it's equally a form of energy that propels you through life. This is a really big theme for you. You know, unconditional love. Receiving love and support from other people just as much as you give and I, I feel like that's where some resentment is bred in you like you totally try respecting your family members certain people in your life and you just don't feel like you're getting the same back and that is where issues can can arise here and you know mm, definitely call upon your spirit guides this year and right now and ask them to help you navigate this feeling if it resonates with you, you know, like, mm, yeah, but relationships are really big here as well. I, I really do feel like you're finding your soul family in 2023 and just like, it's, it feels like a breath out, letting go of toxicity from the past that you had a really hard time letting go of. Mm. Here, let's get a final postcard from your spirit team, the universe as a whole. What do they have to say to you leading into 2020? Dearest you, we here on the other side have one important thing to declare. Love is the answer to literally everything. And they literally said that. They literally gave you the love card. Wow. Oh my gosh. We don't necessarily mean romantic or erotic love, although they are wonderful, but something above and beyond that. Everything alive in the world was first created by love. Spirit sends love to animate life and to birth it into existence. Love is without conditions, and it is based in reverence and a fierce and joyful respect for life. Love thrives when you focus on it, and we want you to turn away from anything that causes it to wane. Mmm, that's a big, big clarification. Turn away from anything that causes your inner love to wane. Love is when you no longer see yourself as other, separate from, better or less than, etc. When you act as love, you give permission to the world to thrive and grow as it will. 
Can you let go of what is not love and ask, what would love do? Love is waiting for you always and forever. We just adore you over here. Love, love, love is your big theme this year, guys. Love. You know, and it's interesting. We spoke of love here. We have love here. Water, which as we said in the beginning, represents emotions and love, romantic and platonic, like really big theme, guys. Your relationships, your emotions, a lot of emotional healing and maturing. And you're really letting go of like these narcissists and learning how to have healthy relationships. Like it's a huge theme for you. And with the four of bows, you will see developments in your connections because of this like family uh marriage like that those types of developments celebration with people who understand you you know being able to celebrate life and the holidays and the hardships with people who genuinely respect you and i feel like so many of you watching are finally invoking that feeling of family that you feel like you might have missed out on for a while so it's a really beautiful year for you thank you guys for joining me like share comment and subscribe if you want the same exact reading only you're seeing my face and i'm only focusing on your energy not like a couple hundred people's energies uh, i offer that on my website spiritpsychic.org go ahead and check it out otherwise i will see you for the next video bye hello group number three and welcome you selected the yellow rose very beautiful and we are going to see what is in store for you in 2023 so this first card that we have here is actually going to represent the overall spiritual theme and lesson that you will be encountering in 2023. I find that over the years I've been doing readings, I've done thousands of readings, especially year ahead readings, and almost always there seems to be this spiritual theme or lesson that the universe is guiding us through. And so I thought, you know, let's figure out what that theme is. And these themes you can apply to like every single area of your life every challenge you encounter and it will offer you the wisdom that you need to move forward in the quickest and easiest way so that theme for you group number three is the coyote and i'm gonna read what this means straight from the book but you have a coyote spirit um, in you and working with you in 2023. And coyotes are beautiful, stunning animals. So here's the essence of them. The coyote is the symbol of the sacred trickster. Also, I want to pause and say you might be working with um, some type of sacred trickster deity as well. So think like Cocopelli or Hermes or I don't know the other ones, but you know, if, if you've been working with those deities, if you're somebody who does work with deities, um, one of those spirit guides might be around you as well. It could come through as the coyote, as another like trickster animal, like a fox or one of those deities. All right, anyways is the symbol of the sacred trickster, the one who provides detours for growth and understanding by ensuring that things don't go as planned. Okay, I wanna pause again, sorry I keep pausing, and say that 2023, things are definitely not going as planned for you, but that's what makes it so beautiful. Um, ooh, I just saw a reel the other day on Instagram and, okay, this is a really bad example to use. This is a really bad example, but it was this girl and she showed her proposal video and it was like she was having a conversation with God or whatever and then the voice was like, don't do it. And she's like, why not? And then he's like, I'll show you. And then she didn't end up um, marrying the guy. Now, I'm not saying that is going to happen to you. Like I said, it was a bad example, but I definitely feel like things aren't going as planned but in the most beautiful way possible to where like in the end, you're gonna be so happy that things didn't go as planned. And this isn't a negative thing, guys. Like I'm not saying like, oh yeah, your beautiful plans to like build your dream home and, and have this family or whatever. Like they're all gonna just go to the trash this year. Like that's not what I'm saying. Like this is a beautiful, things aren't going to planned. I don't know why I just was about to say like, expect unexpected babies, <laughs> but it's the same energy. You know, people who have like, unexpected pregnancies are like what the heck in the moment but then after they have the kid they're like i can't imagine what my life would be like without this kid like what a blessing similar energy so i don't know just because that example popped into my head i just want to say like use protection <laughs> if that's not what you're planning um actually you know what oh i'm not gonna share that story never mind <laughs> uh oh, well now i feel like i have to share it because i mentioned it i know someone who 
um, was actually working with a sacred trickster deity. Um, and they actually did end up pregnant. Like they were specifically working with Cocapelli, the Native American uh, trickster deity. And they actually ended up uh, pregnant in an unwanted fashion, literally like two weeks later after they did this whole big meditation thing. So anyways, oh my God, we're getting so off track here. Um, expect the unexpected is what I want to say there. Okay. The coyote brings the energy of divine deception to set you free from the shackles of that which doesn't serve you. Okay, I want to pause again and finish this story. Actually, I'm sorry, guys. I have ADHD. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't drink my coffee yet. Um, <laughs> coffee helps me focus. So in that example of the, the girl who uh, had the unwanted pregnancy, um, she was actually in a very abusive relationship. And because the sacred deity, the sacred trickster deity um entered their life they kind of made this person go through a set of circumstances that were unplanned and just totally like a wild roller coaster but in the end because those circumstances happened this person realized that they were in an abusive relationship they got out of it they started taking care of themselves better they really started their uh mental health journey because they had to start healing from some of the um m more minor traumas they experienced at the time they were working with this sacred trickster deity but because they started that healing they actually deep dove into their entire past and did so much inner healing work and because of all of this that happened all of this chaotic um events that happened from working with the sacred trickster deity they actually like did a full 180 in life and were way better off than where they even started in the first place so i really just want to clarify here that this is good energy that we're talking about a lot of people are scared and of uh sacred trickster deity in fact i went to a party the other day and this just shows the type of people that i tend to attract around me um someone was telling me uh about how terrified they are and they would never ever ever they were talking about the um i think the egyptian or some type of african uh deity i can't remember the name i wish i did um, and they're like, you never, ever, ever, um, call in that deity because they're like a trickster. They're gonna, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is my cat Luna guys. Yeah. She, she needs attention 100% of the time. So, okay. So let's just keep reading. All right. I, I took a break, drank some coffee. All right. So sometimes it appears that you will get everything that you want only to find out that the coyote brings you the opposite of what you had hoped for. The lessons offered by coyote may at first appear confusing, but they are most sacred and always for your highest good. That's exactly what I was going off on a tangent about. Didn't even have to go off on a tangent. I could have just finished reading. Um, so when this card comes out upright, it's giving you an invitation in life in 2023. Uh, so let's read about what that invitation is. If Coyote calls to you, this is a time to pay special attention to detours and disappointment as they are a true test of faith. You have set your intentions and have turned them over to the great spirit, yet you may find yourself lost and confused when it appears that you are being led off course, off the path leading you to your most cherished dreams and desires. Remember this, Coyote is a sacred trickster and may be leading you into challenges to ensure that you're ready to handle what you've set into motion. Great growth and understanding comes to you when the, coy when the coyote calls your name. Guys, it is extremely blessed and good when you are working with a sacred trickster deity or spirit animal or entity they are here to make sure that you are ready for what ambitions and dreams you have set out on and so i really want you to pay deep deep attention to any big challenges you face in 2023 or i just got chills or um any kind of like detours from your path. And I want you to view this coyote, look into his eyes mentally and say, how is this preparing me and leading me to what I asked for and do a deep meditation on it? How is this challenge 
preparing me for what I have asked for? How is it leading me there? Because that's the thing about the coyote, about the fox. It may appear that they're leading you off course, but really they're taking you on a shortcut, okay? But that's another thing. These shortcuts are not easy most of the time. These shortcuts to do massive amounts of growth and healing. And I really want to point out, guys, if you set the intention with the universe to achieve a lot in a little amount of time and you put that time limit on it, that is usually when coyote and fox spirits and trickster deities come in because they're like, okay, I can, take, I can take you down like a secret alleyway to your, to your ambition. I can take you on this quicker journey, but it's not going to be easy, okay? Massive amounts of growth, or it's not going to appear easy, but I mean, ugh, I'm not trying to scare you guys. I know I'm coming off so chaotic right now, and I assure you that is because we are channeling messages from this type of entity. Um, you know... That, that's just how their energy is. I, I'm trying to get to the point, but I'm going in such an absurd way to get there. <laughs> and I feel like that kind of summarizes 2023 for you. You know, you're going to reach your destination, I assure you. Whatever your goals are, you're going to reach it. Um, the journey there is just going to be a very fun and interesting one. And I can say that as well. When you're working with these trickster energies, like everything in life just seems a little bit more lighthearted. Um, you, you might be surrounded by really funny people. Or just like, I don't know, it, it's just a fun, fun ride. Very chaotic, very fun. Um, so enjoy it. Enjoy 2023. Laugh, live life fully, and really meditate on the challenges in your life that you face on a day-to-day -day basis and see how it's leading you to your ambitions or preparing you or testing you or just making sure that you are ready. So I took another break to start shuffling the cards and sip on some coffee and I saw 1717, which is an angel number that might be of significance. Um, you or someone you know might be born on the 17th or January or July, okay, the first and seventh month of the year. Um, the number 17 might be significant to you in any way. Although I just want to say, like, in general, like, even if it's not significant, the number one is the number of independence and being able to take care of yourself. And the number seven is one of solitude and spiritual wisdom and connecting to spirit. So... I feel like um, you're definitely going on like a spiritual journey this year for sure. One of healing, one of growing, one of connecting to your guides extremely uh, loudly, okay? Really, really seeing the messages and hearing the messages that uh, they have in store for you. And I, I just really feel a strong presence of this trickster energy, um, which is really great. I, I personally um, have worked with trickster, multiple trickster deities um, in my early 20s. And <laughs> to summarize that time period, I would say intense. Uh, there was a lot of changes that happened in a little amount of time. And I always carried such a easygoing um, mood throughout it. Although looking back, I, I realized the amount of work those deities and spirit guides did helping alleviate the heaviness that was on my soul that was put there from previous um, experiences that I had. So I, this is just a really, you're doing a lot of inner healing work right now and you don't even realize it. And Everything that's happening right now, even if it appears to be a side quest or just off your path, it's actually helping you get to where you want to go. So embrace that, okay? Embrace the detours. That would be the best affirmation for 2023 for you. Anyways, getting into the tarot. First card out is your previous year, 2022. In general, we have challenge. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> for everything we just said, that totally makes sense. Uh, just overcoming challenges, facing challenges. This could be um, disputes with people. This could be financial difficulties. This could be just life happening, okay? Life has happened in 2022. And uh, yeah, you faced it. You, dealed with, you dealt with it. So next card out, <laughs> what have you learned from the past year? The Wanderer, absolutely. And again, I'm, I, I'm seeing the trickster energy everywhere in this reading. This is such a light hearted energy traveling lightly, which in a lot of cultures, the trickster spirit almost always is a light traveler. And they also generally rule over traveling. You know, these are deities who are known to just wander about, um, to carry very light, um, 
like stuff with them, like a light bag or a light um, whatever. Like these are free spirited folk. And I feel like in 2022, part of what you went through has really brought out your inner Sagittarius, free spirited energy. You know, you might have done a lot of traveling or like, I, I don't know how to describe the energy I'm really feeling. It's just this this idea that you can become whatever you want in life. You can sculpt the life that you want. You know, you aren't tied down to any one reality. You can go anywhere in the world that you want. You can be whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can surround yourself with whoever you want. And I, that is like the the energy of the wanderer or the fool, as it's known in the traditional Rider Waite tarot. Like they are trusting the process. And I feel like that's been a big lesson you learned as well. Trusting that all of these challenges that you faced in 2022 and previously has prepared you for the reality that the universe wants for you, which is a really, really good reality. You're trusting the universe. Notice how this person's about to step off of solid ground and start walking on this like rainbow bridge. They are trusting spirit. They are trusting the process. They are trusting their intuition. They are trusting the journey. And that's why they travel so lightly. You know, they trust that their needs will always be met no matter what. Um, I totally resonate with this, guys. You know, I feel like as a collective, we tend to go through the same uh, things a lot. Uh, this year for me has totally shown me that my needs literally will will always be met no matter what. Um, I, I went through some changes in my in my job, um, going from working full time on my business and YouTube and, you know, doing readings for y'all to getting like another job. And then I transitioned back out of that job. And it's like the second I transitioned back out of it, I started selling more readings and stuff. It's like in the weirdest ways possible, the universe is always taking care of you. And I feel like that was really, that theme was really honed in this year for you, like truly. And I, I definitely feel like your psychic connection, your spiritual connection to the divine has deepened because you saw that when you take a leap of faith, when you follow that intuition, the universe has your back. You know, when one door closes for you, another one will open. And I feel that, you know, maybe it wasn't even a, a very spiritual type of thing. Maybe you like followed your intuition and left a relationship despite, you know, your fears that you're going to be alone forever or whatever. And then the universe had your back and like all of these weird circumstances happened. And then now like you're surrounded by beautiful people who you just so happen to meet. Um, and it's just like, you know, your needs are always taken care of if you just trust that they will be taken care of. And even, even then they'll be taken care of. Even if you don't trust, the universe has your back, you know? So wear the world lightly. That's kind of the, that's a big quote I've been saying a lot recently um, that keeps popping up into my mind from spirit. And I feel like this picture here has definitely, um, definitely reminds me of that quote, you know, wear the world loosely, you know, don't be so caught up in the challenges that you face. Don't be so caught up in the setbacks, you know, because I, I feel like you really internalize the wisdom that with every challenge comes growth, with every door shut, a new one opens and, and you're just living life in this very graceful, high vibrational place where you can just be free, be more free. You're less tied to the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs, which I, I feel like has been a really big theme for 2022. All right. For many people. Third card out, what you aspire to be in 2023. What is your goals for Varro's rest? I am seeing this more as stability and transformation with this big, big butterfly here being like the center of attention almost. Um, butterflies, or is this a moth? I'm not sure. But either way, they represent uh, transformation, you know, going from a little caterpillar um, with very limited, uh, I want to say limited privilege. Like maybe your finances were a bit short. Maybe your friends were a bit um, not there, uh, like in a very physical way, maybe there were some limitations on how, how greatly you could live your life in 2022 and your aspiration for 2023 is to transform, to grow your wings and to be free. I keep coming back to this word free, freedom. I can go anywhere I want. I can be whoever I want. I can sculpt the relationships I want. You know, you're really tuning into this this energy of I can do whatever I want. I can be whoever I want. Um, 
And I feel like you really put in the work in 2022, overcoming the challenges that prevented you from having this freedom. So maybe you worked really hard at your job to save up enough money to get yourself out of debt. And now you're enjoying this financial freedom to just save your money or spend it on what you want and not put yourself back in debt. You know what I mean? It's that similar energy. Maybe that's the exact example that some of you guys are going through, but like I, th th this is just amazing. And with the four of arrows rest, you know, I'm also seeing you just want a peaceful, simple year. I'm seeing you want more stability, you know, less drama, less chaos. Um, lots of healing as well. Uh, I'm seeing for many of you, the word stabilizing is coming out. If you've been having health issues in 2023, you just want those health issues stabilized. You just want to go back to neutral. Same thing with finances. If you've been in debt, you just want it paid off, go back to neutral so you can enjoy that freedom, you know? Um, if you've been having relationship issues, you just want to figure them out, get back to stable, get back to secure so you can enjoy your freedom. So that is such a big goal, a really good goal as well um, for 2023. Fourth card out, we have what empowers you in reaching your aspirations, the three of bows fulfillment. This is creative growth, guys. Also, we see uh, here the two snakes intertwined, which is a symbol of medicine, a symbol of um, doctoring your wounds. And I, I feel like this goes back to what happened in 2022, where you might have had challenges or problems and you worked hard to resolve them. Like very practically we're talking here okay like maybe um maybe you i'm trying to come up with an example that everyone might resonate with but i don't think everyone would resonate with any example i give um maybe you had a severe limitation like you had a job that worked you to the bone um and you had no free time whatsoever and you worked really, really hard to find a new job um, that gives you time off, that gives you more uh, financial freedom to do the things you want outside of work. And so you you kind of worked really hard to achieve that. Like I'm just, I just keep coming back to this theme of like, you worked really hard for this. You worked really hard for this. It's paying off. It's fulfilling now. You're creating a fulfilling life. The three of bows speaks about growth notice how he's halfway through his path you know he came from over here and he's going up there he's like halfway through he's in a growth state group number three the number three represents growth creative growth personal growth um you're you're on this journey of kind of like leveling up your life and really putting yourself into a place where you can take care of yourself and you can grow from there. You get what I'm saying? Like if you don't have a car, your goal is to get a car this year. If you don't, you know, own your house, you're, you're, you, that might be your goal to own your house. If you're not financially free, you want to be financially free. Like your biggest goal is simply just growing so that you can live a better life, a more fulfilling life where you don't have to worry about things like debts and no free time and uh, fake friends and things like that. You know what I mean? And I, I, I know that's such a general goal, but I mean, it's your goal. <laughs> and how that reflects in your life um, specifically will be different for each of you. But fifth card out, what may stand in the way of you reaching your aspirations? We have the queen of stones in reversed bear, mm, greed or stubbornness. All right. Greed or stubbornness or an inability to be flexible. Mm, inability to be flexible. That's a big one. That's a big one. Um, you know, your goal for growth is going to require you to step outside of your comfort zone and to try new things, to meet new people. And this sacred trickster energy, the coyote, will definitely guide you towards that. Um, but if you're unwilling to go out of that comfort zone, um, nothing's going to change for you. Oh, I see this. Oh, spirit is bringing up an example in my head. I have someone in my life who just all they talk about whenever I see them is how they just really want like a nice partner, you know, a nice person who isn't going to use them, who isn't going to be mean to them. But they only talk to people from their past that they're comfortable with. They have this anxiety that prevents them 
uh, from going on first dates, meeting strangers. And I'm like, listen, if everyone in your past misuses you, is not nice to you, um, and just treats you awfully, you're not going to manifest that beautiful partner you want if you keep waiting for people from the past to change. You know, you need to go out and meet new people. And I feel like when the queen of stones is in reverse, it really does show that inflexibility. Doing things the same way you always did them is not going to lead you to a new outcome. And I'm not saying you need to completely give up on how you've been working towards a dream or goal, but maybe integrate new ideas. So for example, if you have a business you're looking to grow and it's just very stagnant, this can show trying a new marketing technique, doing collaborations, um, adding new products or kind of changing up your service a bit, whatever it is. I don't know if this is, you know, I just want to manifest really good friends in my life. This can be like literally going out and meeting strangers, you know, using things like Bumble BFF or like Facebook groups or Reddit to find local local really going out to parties and actually talking to people instead of sitting in the corner you know these things might be out of your comfort zone but that's the thing growth always lies on the other side of your comfort zone and the more often you go out of your comfort zone the more comfortable it becomes to go out of your comfort zone then your comfort zone also is going out of your comfort zone does that make any sense if you become comfortable with being uncomfortable then everything in life is comfortable. <laughs> wow, okay, I never had a message like that come through. If you go outside of your comfort zone enough, you will become comfortable with being uncomfortable and then everything is comfortable. And that's when you really tap into this wander spirit, this just being really comfortable in, in any given situation in life, just, treating the world as your home you know i sometimes i meet people whose energy is just so cozy and comfortable it's like they are unbothered in any given circumstance um i feel like i tried to embody that energy when i was younger when i was a teenager i would literally just wear slippers everywhere <laughs> I would literally just be comfortable, literally, like physically comfortable everywhere. Um, didn't really work for me because I think like socially and energetically, I was always uncomfortable. But, you know, this is someone who is generally or genuinely comfortable in any given circumstance because you go out of your, your comfort zone so often. You know, that's the type of person um, you're becoming. And I really wanna say, I'm giving you a warning here from the coyote, coyotes coming through or a sacred trickster, whoever it is for you, coming through saying, if you don't wanna go out of your comfort zone this year, that's tough because you're doing it. Like <laughs> they are going to put you in situations that will bring you out of your comfort zone. And so to that, I wanna say, embrace this energy now and choose the situations where you're going out of your comfort zone instead of waiting for this trickster energy to put you in embarrassing situations, because it will happen, it will definitely happen. All right, so just embrace it now, you know, just, just do it now. Next card out. <laughs> We have your relationships and emotions in 2023. Oh, how about that? L look, I said the, there it is again. The fox, the, another trickster. Like I said, coyotes, foxes, Hermes, Cocopelli, like all these trickster animals and, and energies are coming through strongly for you. But this Knight of Bows did come out and reversed. All right. Um, so I, uh, Knight of Bows, Knight of Wands in reversed. This is giving me douchebag vibes, guys. Um, if you're single and dating, or, you know, just seeing people casually, definitely avoid douchebags, okay? <laughs> the Knight of Bows, this is someone who, you know, is sly. They come in and they tell you just enough of what you want to hear uh, to get what they want out of it. And then just as quickly, they are gone into the night. You know what I mean? So that might be something you want to avoid. Um, I would also say pay attention to any new people you meet who might be friends or whatever. Um, if you have a feeling that someone is using you, listen to that feeling. Listen to that feeling strongly, okay? If you have a feeling someone is using you, listen to it. And 
do whatever you got to do from that, all right? Uh, Knight of Bows in Reverse is also kind of showing me in your relationships and emotions this year. There's a lot of fleeting types of energies. I am getting a lot of fire energy from you. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but especially Sagittarius energy. Like I, I always associate it with like um, uh, coming and going and not being settled and like not really looking to settle down. You know what I mean? Especially with the Wanderer coming out for you. Maybe it's you that's not wanting to settle down right now. You know, maybe you just want to travel, see more of the world, get to know new people, but you're not necessarily interested in like, making your life super permanent right now and you know you could be very interested in like settling down a bit like you know um i don't know getting married having a family getting a dream house whatever but like you still have this wanderlust this desire to explore into the unknown explore unknown realms so i i really do feel that um in your relationships and emotions as well lots of wanderlust and kind of just really wanting to meet new people, wanting to put yourself out there, wanting to experience new things with people. If you're not going to meet new people, you want to at least experience new things with the people that you do know or with yourself. You know what I mean? Like you have a very restless soul um, in 2023, which is going to lead to so much growth. OK, so much growth. Next up, we have your work, your career and finances this year. And we have the queen of bows in reversed the hair. OK. So this is the Queen of Wands in reversed. And the Queen of Wands is someone who is very ambitious. And they have a goal that they want in life. And they're very warm and charming and charismatic. They work well with others. And they kind of use different people in their lives' energies and skills to help better their own life and their and their vision for their life and their vision for their career um in reverse this could be somebody who should be that queen that very charming charismatic queen with a vision who you know makes the most out of people's unique skills and personality traits and is a really good leader but I feel that when the Queen of Bows is in reverse, this is someone who refuses to put in the work themselves or they refuse to treat other people with respect and it kind of makes them a bad leader. So I wonder if, if you're employed in a traditional sense, if a higher up or like advisor, manager, owner, something like that, I wonder if they're like a poor leader. I wonder if, you know, they have a really like they're just bad at scheduling they're bad at like making the most out of your skills they're bad at like and they're this is someone who's not willing to like get down and dirty with the people doing the actual work you know what i mean like they just lead from afar and kind of give off this air of like i'm better than you whatever so i wonder if you're working with someone like that uh, which can be very frustrating. If you are self-employed or in a position where you're kind of more so the leader of your own life, this is more so illuminating a need to do a lot more planning and a lot more doing, you know, making the to-do list and actually doing it. <laughs> Procrastination might be your biggest, um, your biggest one of your biggest issues this year, okay? So just make sure you're not doing that. And even if you're employed, like say you really want a new job, don't procrastinate it, okay? Make like a, a grounded goal each week to lead you to whatever growth and productivity you are looking for. Otherwise, it can be really easy to just keep saying and inspiring yourself, saying that you're going to do this, you're going to do that, but then you never actually get any work done. You know, the universe helps those who helps themselves. And this is definitely a year that you want to be productive. I feel like you have so much energy, so much energy to grow, like grow, 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 transform, see new things, experience new things. It's a very busy year for you, group number three. So Moving on, your health and well-being this year, the hooded man reversed. This is like the hermit in reversed. Ooh, some of you guys might be struggling with loneliness. Loneliness. Feeling unsupported by the people around you. Or if it's not loneliness, I wonder if some of you guys feel unheard by certain doctors or 
medical professionals. Uh, maybe you've been experiencing symptoms or some type of issue about something and you just feel like every time you mention it, you know, they just kind of like brush it off or like it, uh, this is almost that feeling because when this comes out in reverse, it's this feeling of like nobody's listening to me. Nobody's hearing me. I feel so alone and unsupported here. Mm. That's a pretty big problem in the medical uh, field. Um, you know, you really have to be a self-advocate and kind of demand um, to be tested for and like have your concerns be taken seriously sometimes, which is really sad. Um, I'm not saying you're going to have health issues. I'm just saying those of you who are dealing with this and you resonate with this message, you know, it's going to be important for you to really have that self-advocacy this year. Um, also, just in a general sense of your health and well-being, I think it would be good for you to allow yourself to be helped by other people. Allow yourself to use your support system. Okay, and if you don't have a support system, this is the year to create it. Like that's a foundation for happiness. Having people around you who you can talk to about anything and rely on for anything, you know? Um, that's really important for your sense of well-being. So in reverse, if you don't have that support system, you know, that is directly affecting your well-being substantially. Because that is like a baseline need for humans is to have a support system just as important as feeding yourself and having shelter is to have a group of people who you can rely on and even if you're married for example and your spouse is your support system you need a bigger support system it can't just be your spouse okay because no one person can be there for you 100 percent of the time you need friends you need like other family other people who will be there for you in a pinch and if you don't have that, this is the year of building that for yourself, which is why we go, went back to this theme here with the Queen of Stones in reverse. Like, it's time to go meet new people and put yourself out there and consciously choose the people that you're surrounding yourself with. That's another big thing as well, because if your support system, the people around you are all very negative, like victim, victimizing themselves constantly and just being a drain. Like, yeah, it's time to put yourself out there and find people who are optimistic and happy to be alive and who will inspire you and who will be good for you. Okay, change your mindset. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and, and meet new people. Next, we have your spiritual energy and inner fulfillment and you have the four of stones in reversed protection. Mmm. I... Uh, Again, we go back to like your overall ambition for this year and we see rest, we see four, we see stability. Like you just want stability. You just want a stable relationship, a stable support system, stable finances, stable health. That's what you're looking to really, really build this year. And that's where your fulfillment will, will come. So with the four of stones in reversed, um, a lot of your spiritual energy and inner fulfillment will come out when you have that stability. I will say, um, one of the best things you can do if you're looking to develop your psychic um, intuition, if you're looking to become more connected to spirit and be able to hear spirit more loudly, if you're looking to heal on a very deep level, the first thing you need to do is create stability in your life. Okay, because when you're actively in survival mode and constantly being attacked by all sides um, in life, it is almost impossible for you to like have that that space to just be safe, be protected and just allow, you know, these things to resurface. You know what I mean? I did not do profound amounts of inner healing work until I was in a stable living situation. You know, when I was living with people who were chaotic and uh, screaming all the time and constantly having to put myself in survival mode, I did not do much healing, but the second I moved out into a nice, quiet, stable environment with stable people who were healthy for me, you know, it might have not been the most exciting thing in the world, but I had that stability, I had that routine, and from that routine, all of these things resurfaced from my, my, my subconscious, from my spirits, from my memory, to be worked through and dealt with. You know, when we go through traumas, sometimes that trauma goes deep into our subconscious mind, and it won't come back out for us to actually work through it, so it doesn't affect our lives anymore until we are in this safe space and we're protected. Um, 
And that is just so, so, so important. Like if you are in a chaotic living situation, working situation, relationship, 2023 is the year to get out of that, get out of it. Okay. And you know, the coyote, the fox, the trickster spirit, they really do align themselves with people who are in this place of survival because these spirits are wonderful at um, movement and moving away and moving out of bad situations. They are experts at living in survival mode. They are experts at um, kind of being able to survive in any given situation. You know what I mean? So they these trickster spirits tend to work with those who are like they don't have that established safe space that established home and family and support system that is super or like even finances that are super you know grounded and secure for them um these spirits work very well with people like you who who are looking to develop that in your life um this spirit is keeping you alive and keeping you well while your your spirit and your body is in a state of constant flux in a state of constant survival in a state of constant you know adaptation so thank this spirit you know light a candle for them <laughs> like i said they're nothing to fear they they're working for your best interests i assure you and they might have to trick you and you know create certain sets of circumstances um so that you can get out of this state of living so they don't have to connect with you anymore <laughs> um anyways next we have what you need to most focus on in 2023 the year ahead and we have the ancestor in reversed this is the hero font in the traditional tarot you're on your own path when this card comes out in reversed you know you might not subscribe to any one religion any one career path any one thing like you are truly on your own unique life path um however that does not mean you're alone and so in 2023 you're being asked to really allow yourself to have mentors and teachers and maybe even a therapist and and multiple people around you who will help guide you in life you know surround yourself with like elders if that makes sense and i'm not talking just like old people i'm talking like people who can help guide you like if you've been thinking about getting a therapist for example this is a big sign that you should if you've been thinking about um taking on a certain teacher or mentor or or something like that this is your sign that you should and it doesn't mean that, you know, this is a cult leader. It doesn't mean that this person is going to tell you exactly what to do in life, but they will give you some guidance to help you along your own individual journey. You know, look at this um, being as like a spirit guide and they have this drum here to help guide your shamanic journey, to help guide you as you're on your own journey into the spirit realm. They beat the drum that keeps you grounded in your body and yet able to navigate your own path and spirit i don't know if you guys are familiar with shamanic journeying i made a whole video on it um but they're not telling you what to do they're just helping you helping guide you in life so surround yourself with role models um teachers and support as much as possible even if you can't afford a therapist um this can even just be like getting yourself some self-help books or following certain mentors or certain budgets or certain teachings or actively searching for role models who positively display that which you are lacking in your life like i remember when i was coming out of my teenage years i had the revelation like i've never actually been exposed to like positive male role models so what i did was i went online and i found positive male role models and i became like obsessed with um mr rogers for a bit <laughs> and like it was it was just wild that was the first time in my life i was exposed to like an emotionally intelligent man which is sad but like i actively sought out these examples of of good good thing i would seek out examples of like healthy relationships as well um which ironically, <laughs> ironically led me to Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, I think they get a lot more hate than they actually deserve. But 
Uh, you, you get the point, like surround yourself with positive role models. Next, we have your most important lesson in the coming year. And it is Five of Stones Endurance. Ooh, yeah, surviving the storms. Not only surviving, but thriving through the storms of life. And I just feel like you're becoming such an adaptable person. You know, this person, it's storming out, it's lightning out, it's scary outside, but they found themselves a little cave and, you know, they have a little fire going and they're making the most of this time. They're not focusing on the storm. They're focusing on the warmth of the fire and using this storm as an opportunity to just rest and take care of themselves and reflect. You know, you can make the most of the, you know, I feel really guided to actually read this from the book, so I'm gonna do that. Five of Stones Endurance. The meaning here, it takes inner strength and courage to protect yourself and survive the challenges of life. This may mean withdrawing from trauma to focus on emotional resilience. Um, and here's some, some points to read about. Of all the qualities a spiritual warrior or seeker on the journey of life must possess, the spirit and will to endure is most important. In the words of one screenwriter or one sque screen swordmaster, Bob Anderson, nobody said it was fair. There will be trials and there will be harsh challenges. Life is a contact sport and there will be bruises. The desire and willpower to survive and recover from setbacks is vital and necessary. Legend has it that in 1306, Robert the Bruce took shelter in a cave for three winter months while being hunted by soldiers of King Edward I in Scotland. This was the lowest point in his life, having suffered defeat in battle, seen his brothers executed and sister captured. The Bruce's only companion in the cave was a spider that attempted to spin its web repeatedly across the mouth of the windy cave. Repe repeatedly, repeatedly, the wind tore the web apart, but at last the spider succeeded in its quest and the web weathered the storm. Maintaining a resilient mind and retaining a sense of humor are the most important to our health, along with the knowledge that the sun will rise on another day filled with opportunities. Oh, I just got the chills. Some of you guys have really been going through it uh, one way or another, like just life has not been super easy. You know, we have challenges in 2022. I, I feel like this past year has not been easy for you, but you've endured, okay? You have endured. And I feel like this is a really positive message that that endurance and that making the most of your situation is going to lead to great, great beauty and success in 2023 and beyond. Like you've been working so hard with very little results. I'm getting the goosebumps again. That's a sign from the universe, by the way, that what we're saying is correct. You've been working so hard at your goals, at just living, at surviving. You've been through so much your entire life. And it's just like, when am I gonna catch a break spirit? When am I gonna catch a break universe? And it's like, they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And you keep getting this hope in your heart that like, you'll no longer struggle and then you struggle some more, but you still have not given up. You still have held on to this endurance and the universe is going to be paying off, finally paying off all of the hard work and patience that you've been having. And I just love to see that. So where will you be heading in the next 12 months overall? We have the wheel reversed. Change, big, 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 big change coming in life guys i'll read this from the book for you too you know a little story time you know um this is the wheel of fortune in the traditional tarot the wheel has turned change is at hand what did we just say what did we just say in all nature there is a time and a tide the cyclical laws of birth death and rebirth are ever revolving and without change all things stagnate how you deal with this change is the issue here. Within the tangled and tightly woven fabric of chance, you have the power to make a difference. By your own actions, you can change your own life. You are not a prisoner of fate, but an integral part of it. Remember, this is not a dress rehearsal. Life is what happens to you while you are waiting for it to begin. Whether on the surface the change appears to be for better or worse, welcome it. Be at peace with it and take control of the actions within it. All things must pass. 
there's a huge spiritual lesson for you um, involving change. Uh, one thing is for certain, nothing will ever, ever, ever stay the same. Energy is constantly moving and changing and evolving and in motion. It's never stagnant. And you as a human are subject to that. And you have the decision in life, do I want to embrace change and actively seek it out in ways which I want that change to happen? Or am I going to leave it up to fate? Am I going to leave it up to fortune? Am I going to leave it up to the universe? And I'm telling you in this reading, you decide, okay? Embrace the fact that everything has to change. And then when you're able to embrace that, you will consciously make the decisions to have that change, to go out of your comfort zone. And life will go in the direction that you want. Your conscious will and decision-making skills is like the sails to a ship. And your ship is your life. And the universe and your reality is the ocean. The tides are always changing. Your ship will always be moving. And you can let the universe and let those tides decide for you where your ship's heading. Or you can put your stinking sails up and actually go somewhere you want to go. You know, people... I, I'm a big believer in like letting things happen and going with the flow, sure. However... You have to understand that every human in this reality has free will and that free will pushes the tides, okay? Pushes the tides. So if you are just leaving everything up to fate, you're just essentially letting society and everyone around you determine where you're going in life. Whereas if you decide, you know what, actually I'm gonna make changes myself and I'm gonna do what I want, that is you finally putting your sails up in life and going where you want to go. You know, so many people are asleep. What do I mean by asleep? They don't have their sails up. They are simply subjects to destiny. They are subjects to their ancestors and the ancestors' decisions and the people around them and society's decisions. There is power in conscious will. There is power in making your own decisions and realizing your own power. So many people leave things up to fate. Like it is not a coincidence that certain demographics do these certain jobs and have this certain amount of success and like everyone like look around you and see how the people around you are products of their parents products of society and product products of where they grew up and it is only the free-minded folks who are awake to their power who craft their own life exactly how they want it they are no longer prisoners of fate they are controllers of it and those who are awake have a lot more power in society. You know, these are the ones that are co-creating reality. And when you awaken that power within yourself, you will start to notice how much influence your spirit has in the world and those around you. Because so many people are asleep and just following those who are awake. And it's really important that good people are awake to this power instead of bad people. And unfortunately, there are lots of bad people who are awake to this power. And they're the ones that are disrupting the natural balance in life for their own personal gain. And spirit is trying to awaken good people to, you know, their own power to co-create reality. And that's what's happening to you right now. They're saying, listen, change is going to happen no matter what. That is just physics. That is just the world. That is just the universe. Use your conscious will to bring about the change that you want to see in the world and in your own life and take action on it. Don't wait for it to happen because when you wait, the universe is going to make change happen, but it's not going to be in your hands, you know? Mm. And when you start doing that, you become very in control of your life. And then as you do that, you also tune in to your own connection to the universe as well. And you can predict things with great accuracy. And then your psychic abilities develop. And then nothing's really a surprise. You know, you, you are at peace all the time. Nothing surprises you anymore. Because you are creating reality. You're in tune enough with the universe to where you can accurately predict what's going to happen next. And nothing becomes a surprise. You don't have any of these things out of left field, you know, just shaking things up. Unless there's a huge divine intervention in your life for some reason. So anyways, this is a whole tangent. Uh, let's finish up your reading with some messages from your spirit guides and ancestors and angels and whoever wants to come through. Their messages for you is be proud. 
It's time to celebrate all that you've achieved, all that you are, and all that you will become. Every once in a while, it's important to stop and acknowledge what you've achieved and be proud. Celebrate your life. Celebrate how far you've come. Like, I don't even think you you realize how far you've come. And then your postcard from Spirit. Dearest you, did you know that when you stop fighting and accept everything exactly as it is right now, miracles start to happen? There is freedom in this kind of radical acceptance. Let go of unrealistic expectations and see things as they really are, not how you'd like them to be. You'll be surprised at how everything seems to fall into place. I'm going to pause and say, I wonder if some of you guys experience limerence, which is kind of where you have this whole idea of who someone is in your mind and what you are together. Like, they're my soulmate, they're my twin flame. But then on the surface, they're just kind of treating you like crap. When you kind of let push that thinking aside, like they're my soulmate, whatever, and you only act off of what's going on right in front of the present moment and you start treating them as someone who treats you like crap, then you'll start to see some growth and results and forward movement, you know, get a little bit more grounded in reality. I feel like you guys are very spiritual. You're very much in the higher realms of thinking. But sometimes it's really important to ground ourselves and deal with what's going on in the present moment, exactly how it appears. When you refuse to accept things, life gets messy. You act messy, and your world stays in chaos, tension, and disarray. But don't try to force or change or manipulate circumstances. Instead, learn about what is in front of you and face it with your eyes fully open. Then you can decide, stay or go, sink or swim, move or stay still. Accept, acceptance is the key to freedom and opens the door to the real opportunities waiting to be discovered. Set yourself and others free. Loving you so much, always and forever. And that's your reading, guys. Lots of freedom being developed. Lots of power being developed in 2023. Ooh, very, very deep, very spiritual types of energies we see here. Overcoming challenges. Actually embracing challenges. Embracing newness. Embracing chaos. And you're, it's like you're putting the, the sails up for the first time in your life and you're actually able to navigate your own path and journey while still allowing people to help you along the way, help you make decisions to navigate your own path. As we see with the ancestor here with the spirit guide, helping you guide you on your journey, but they can't make decisions for you. And I feel like in the past, a lot of your life, changes that have happened have been decided for you decided by fate or just kind of happened naturally like you just so happen to meet these friends via circumstance you just so happen to run into this partner via you know mutual friends and now it's just like no i'm consciously creating my life i will actively seek out the people i want to surround myself with i will actively seek out the career path that i want i will actively seek out the experiences that i want and i'm not going to wait around for the universe to bring it to me like i'm going to actively seek it out and create my reality that's kind of the vibe for the year ahead so thank you guys for joining me like share comment and subscribe if you would like this reading one-on-one -on -one, just focusing on your energy um i offer that on my website spiritpsychic.org the new year tarot slash mediumship reading go check it out hundred dollars straight up um i look forward to doing it so thank you guys see you for the next video bye okay group number four you selected the navajo sandstone which is a very beautiful stone that helps balance and harmonize the relationships in your life and it just calms you down so it's really good to have on hand so let's see what your overall spiritual theme and lesson will be in 2023 so i noticed that when i do year-long readings for people um there always tends to be a kind of like spiritual theme or lesson that they go through and if you apply the wisdom of this lesson or whatever it is the universe is trying to teach you into every like everyday challenge that you have um you'll actually find a lot of success in doing so so what is your theme and challenge for the year ahead overall you have many paths and look it's beautiful if you look really closely at this card you can see a heart and a head and the outline of like a spirit connected to the universe with all the different paths that they can take so it's a very beautiful beautiful card so let me read this uh from the book for you the essence of many paths 
All paths lead to spirit. What you bring to your journey is what will determine if yours is a path of suffering, a path of wisdom, a path of bliss, or a path of loss. Consider the traveler who met two stonemasons. He asks one what he is doing, and the mason replies, I am squaring out the stone. He asks the other, who is doing the exact same thing, and gets the reply, I am building a cathedral. One man has a job, and the other man has found his work and calling. He is part of an endeavor much greater than himself. Be sure you pick a path with a heart. Um, so right away in 2023, I see you kind of finding your purpose or finding like a much higher reason for doing whatever it is that you're doing, especially when it relates to career and job. Um, for many of you, if you feel like you are feeling very lost in your career or like you're just doing a job really um i see you kind of e either switching your mindset or switching your job entirely to one you're much more passionate about one that kind of serves the greater good in one way even if it's like a completely creative job and you're just like well i mean i'm not a doctor i'm not a lawyer i'm not changing lives directly like even if you're just a chef for example you are creating food that is bringing people together and as they're coming together to eat your food they might be having really important conversations they might be making life-altering decisions you know what i mean so you are in a way changing um changing the world um in addition to that you are carrying on traditions and culture and cooking and passing that down to younger generations without you those cooking traditions might be lost so i feel like when you have a calling towards whatever job you do it makes it a lot more fun to work so we see you kind of um finding your path in some ways in 2023 so when this card comes out upright which it did for you um you're being invited by the universe to do something in 2023 and here's your invitation your call now is to take a big bold step and leave the beaten path Ooh. Heaven and earth are conspiring on your behalf to support you in this move. Do not dally lest you miss the moment. It's time to sail into the uncharted. Be sure you attend to both your path through this earth as well as your journey through the stars. So you heard it first here, guys. A big, bold change off the beaten path. I don't know why I'm seeing for many of you that you're actually making a pretty big career jump or career move, like completely changing fields or getting a new job entirely. Um, or or starting your own business. I, I don't know. I feel like this is a really, really significant year for group number four because it seems like you're making one or more life altering decisions. Like some of you guys might be making a decision to just up and move to a whole nother country or like start a whole new passion and from that like like i don't know you're doing something unusual especially like i, I don't know why this example came to my head um there's like a a circus school <laughs> near where i live uh that i recently just discovered and i'm like maybe you're literally going to school um for circus arts and joining the circus you know that's very much off the beaten path but how fun is that living a nomadic life um doing something super fun connecting deeply with um people like your coworkers, i guess you could say um it, it's really fun but not a lot of people choose that path in life and maybe you're going off of the traditional path of just you know going to college and getting a job and staying in that job for 30 years and then retiring like maybe you are you're you're switching your path up i feel like it's not just societal beaten path this is your own beaten path you know you're shaking up your own life and making really big changes this year so i really i'm curious about what these changes are if you have an idea leave them in the comment section down below but otherwise we're going to get started with your tarot cards okay so we're pulling 12 cards all with different meanings first card l is representing 2022 um as a whole you know the whole energy of it what you experienced etc and you have the seven of stones in reversed healing this has been a really big healing year for you i feel like when you look back on 2022 years down the line like in a few years in like five years you're gonna look back at this year as like one where you did a lot of inner healing work um and like, I, I really feel this big energy towards like letting go of the past, letting go of past traumas, letting go of resentment, especially towards your family, uh, resentment towards your childhood, resentment towards old friends and people from your past. It's been a lot of like letting go 
of the trauma that you have faced in the past. I'm also seeing healing your body as well. Some of you guys have been making a lot better decisions when it comes to your health. Maybe some of you started exercising regularly, eating a lot better, drinking a lot more water, going to doctors, you know, taking care of your physical health, maybe even your mental health. I've been really feeling this for the collective as well. I, I have been feeling in 2022 a lot more people taking mental health seriously, which I love to see. And I feel like this theme is actually going to go even further starting in 2023 because on March 7th, we have Saturn moving into Pisces. Um, and whatever sign Saturn is in really changes generations. They change the collective because it's a slow moving planet. Um, and so I feel like during Saturn in Pisces, we're going to start to see mental health be taken a lot more seriously, a lot of advancements in psychology, especially um, I, I have a feeling some types of uh psychopharmaceuticals will be outlawed. There will be more legislation on it. This, these are just my predictions. Um, I feel like plant medicine will be integrated into um, psychology and psychological, psych psychiatric practices as well. And where was I going with this? I feel like you've been kind of um, feeling this energy in 2022 um, building up and you've been doing a lot of like psychological work on yourself, reading a lot of self-help or um, meditating or like even just trying to heal your relationships, your relationship with job, your relationship with your body. There's just been so much healing that has taken place in 2022. So I love to see that for you. Uh, next card out, we have what you have learned from 2022. Five of Vessels Ecstasy. Wow. This is a really, really good card. I mean, like this is just the pure and utter excitement to live life. This is raw life force energy. This is just having fun. This is just like she's literally dancing in a pentagram, which represents um, earth, air, water, fire and spirit, right? with all of these elements of life, with all of the stars aligning to make her life existence, you know, these things are all rare. These things, like everything had to be so perfect just for you to exist in this lifetime. And she is celebrating that fact. She's dancing in the night. She is celebrating her humanity, her autonomy, her freedom. The fact that she's alive, you know, I, I feel like 2022 has been like a reawakening of your life, especially after, um, COVID, which obviously we're still kind of dealing with, but you know, after the the huge, hugeness of it, I would rather say, um, you've been just trying, you've been waking up, you've been uh, putting yourself out there again, you've been socializing, you've been like, I feel like the past few years has really taught you how to appreciate your life in the now, because you never know when this is going to end, you never know when things are going to change, you never know if the people that are in your life right now are always going to be there. And I feel like you've kind of internalized this theme and you've just been really living life in the present moment. Um, that's been one of the biggest lessons that you learned from 2022 is just how to live more presently and how to have more fun without having the fear that this fun is going to go away one day. You know what I mean? So that's such a beautiful lesson to internalize and bring with you for the rest of your life. So this has been a really good year for you. And I feel like you raised your vibration substantially this year. And this is something that you will be able to carry with you for the rest of your life. So what do you aspire to be in 2023? With all that being said, what are your aspirations for this new year? We have the King of Arrows in reversed, King Fisher. Okay, so the King of Arrows or King of Swords is an energy that knows exactly what they want and then they go get it. You know, the King Fisher can pinpoint their prey and they dive to go get it head first, right? Um, so you're kind of just hoping to stay focused, stay organized, stay on, on, on task, you know, and make some sweeping changes and progress in your life. Okay. Now it did come out in reverse. So I do feel like you have some self doubts. If you're going to be successful as much as you want to be in 2023, I do feel like you have a ton of ambition. So sometimes, you know, you might have that fear of like, am I being too ambitious? So don't be hard on yourself, but I, I feel like you really aspire to get stuff done this year, to see swooping changes um, in yourself, in the world, in whatever you're like setting your mind to going into this year, okay? Lots of, lots of ambition, but just make sure you're not being too harsh and critical of yourself because I feel like that can actually set your ambitions back a little bit. So 
speaking of what empowers you in reaching these swooping changes in reaching this aspiration you have the journey death change transformation and this totally totally resonates with the many paths card that came out for you this is saying make big bold changes now is the time to do it the death card is a, a blessed card i love it so much this is a card of and notice all the birds as well birds might be a powerful spirit animal for you at this time just generally birds um the death card in the tarot really does represent massive transformation and change you know like going from living to dead uh <laughs> It, it just really represents letting go of things that aren't meant to be, letting go of the stagnation of life and embracing life in the now. And I feel like what empowers you to make these swooping changes, I keep, I keep coming back to that swooping and we have the bird imagery here and I'm just imagining like a bird of prey swooping in to get its food, you know, swooping into the skull to, to feast, you know, swooping into the, to the water to get fish, you know what I mean? Um, I see that like as your goal and you're just looking to make swooping changes and growth towards your ambitions, whatever it may be in your life. Like this is a year to be bold, you know, start that business, change that job, um, buy that house. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what your goals are personally. Start that side hustle, you know, I, I don't know why I just got a vision of somebody who does art and you're like starting to sell it. You're just putting yourself out there. You're just making that social media account. You're putting yourself out there. You're making an Etsy store. I don't know what you're doing. Like you're just doing it. You're just going for it. You're putting yourself out there. You are just doing it. Creating that podcast, writing that book, having that family. I don't know exactly what your goals are because it's different for everyone watching, but this is a really, 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 really huge sign to literally just do it. Because when you sit around and you don't do it, your life becomes stagnant. Your life starts to decay, okay? And similar to what I was saying to group number four, you know, life always will change and it's better to initiate those changes yourself than to wait around for the universe to show you what changes are happening. Because the thing is, we are all the universe, you, me, everyone around us. And some people are awake to their ability to co-create reality. And everyone is co-creating reality. Everyone is creating ripples in the waters of life. And if you're just a boat sailing along with no sails, you know, you're just letting life take you where it may, it's not like this higher source is guiding you well it kind of is guiding you but you have to keep in mind other people's prayers and intentions are also guiding you and that might not be guiding you to the best places so it's really important to put your sails up and make bold decisive actions okay decide where you're going in life and co-create your reality don't just let it happen for you don't just sit around letting it happen like get up get out there and live life now and that's another lesson that death brings us those who have near-death experiences will all tell you i've had several near-death experiences so much life comes from them because you realize on a very real personal level that life is so easily lost and it just really makes you no longer take things for granted anymore like you know what? i'm gonna start living my life now for me doing the things that i want to do because this this journey can end at any time okay so live life boldly uh card number five what may stand in the way of reaching your aspirations we have three of stones creativity mm. You know, this card rarely comes out for me from this deck specifically. Three of stones, creativity. Listen to your creative nudges. If you feel like you're having a creative blockage, um, simple solution to that, very simple solution to that is going out of your comfort zone, okay? Um, traveling, meeting new people, exposing yourself to new ideas. That is like the simplest and easiest way to get out of a creative blockage, straight up. I get the best ideas for my business and for my life direction when I'm traveling, I swear. Like I love seeing new places and meeting new people, but there's nothing I love more than the energy of doing that and then wanting to go home <laughs> and implement the new ideas that I, I come up with from that. Like I just love, I mean, I am a Capricorn moon, full moon at that <laughs> and i just love working on the things that i i love working on i just love working and i feel like same thing for you if you feel like you're going through creative blockage um again live life boldly meet new people on different paths than you um go see new places expose yourself to new ideas 
And f just from that exposing yourself to that, you will get creativity, okay? Mm. But also with this card, I'm looking more so at the image. And this is like what prevents your aspirations in 2023. And I see you like rooting yourself into the earth, almost like she is made of stone, like not moving. When you, when you are always exposed to the same people and places and things, and you never challenge your mindset or experience newness or shake up your routine and, and seek novelty. You become like a stone, always stuck in the same place, never moving forward. So I, I feel like that's another message in that card of what may get in the way of you reaching your aspirations this year. So next card up, we have your relationships and emotions in 2023. Nine of arrows, dedication. You have some loyal people around you that are not gonna give up easily. So that's a big, big blessing. Um, very loyal people who are gonna stick by your side through thick and thin and kind of inspire you on your journey and kind of keep you on the right path. I feel like the people around you right now are definitely keeping you on the right path. But it's interesting, in this image, we see someone trying to learn how to shoot arrows, right? And all of these arrows are mis missing, but they aren't giving up. They're continuing to chase after their dream. They're continuing to hone in their craft. And I feel like um, when it comes to your emotions and when it comes to the relationships around you, it's the same thing. Like if you have, especially if you're in a romantic relationship right now and you're seeing like hard times, I want you to pay attention. Is this person giving up on the relationship or are they doing everything that they can to overcome challenges, to make things work, to listen to you, to grow? If they're having that dedication, girl, boy, it is time to, I don't know, put a ring on it or something because that is so wonderful and like that's all you can ask from people not that they're perfect not that you have the perfect friendship or relationship but that they are dedicated and loyal and that they do whatever it takes to nurture you as well as themselves nurture the relationship and just keep working towards it and keep supporting you in your dreams and encouraging you not to give up if you have people like that in your life do something nice for them because, I mean, that is such an important thing to have in your life. Mm. So I, I love this card for you. You really do have some great people around you, which is going to play into your journey. I, I feel like you have a big idea and the people around you are actually supportive of it. Or like you have an unusual life path, an unusual set of circumstances. Like maybe you're in an unusual like career field or relationship dynamic or just making unusual choices. And yet the people around you are still very supportive of you and they try to understand and empathize, you know? And I just think that's really awesome. That's all you can ask for in life, honestly. That's great. Your work, career, and finances. We have the king of bows, Adder. This is honestly one of the best cards you could have gotten for this position. I really do feel like for many of you, your career is taking off in 2023. And it's again, because of this dedication, you have tons of supportive people around you. And your your main aspiration is for this swooping change to happen, this fast forward momentum. And I really do see it happening for you. At least if, if this goal is involving your career, your finances, property, uh, things you own, etc. Because like this is a card of someone who has a goal in mind and they achieve it. You know, they just achieve it. They make it happen. They make it work. The snake is also an animal of transformation, you know, shedding old versions of themselves and embracing the new versions of themselves. It's a really, really beautiful card to get. Um, so yeah, finances are very abundant. I'm like looking at all these snakes here. There's like an abundance of snakes, an abundance of money. The flowers are blooming. The sun is shining. It's just a good energy overall. Uh, things are transforming for you. I think you're also shedding old layers of like poverty mindset, old layers of self-doubt, um, old layers of awkwardness even. And you're becoming this rich, prosperous, charismatic, and charming person. And it's really going to take you far in your career because you're giving off this energy of leader. I am a leader. I am in control. Wow. This is like the best card you could have gotten. Almost like one of the best cards you could have gotten for career and finances this year. Mm. How about your health and well-being? Two of vessels attracted. Wow. Okay. This is a card of relationships. Mm. So 
some of y'all have been staying hydrated as well, I'm seeing. I, uh, the first thing that popped into my head with this is that there's someone in your life who is keeping you healthy, which is wonderful. Like maybe you have a gym partner, uh, some friends who like working out with you, some friends who like going on hikes or walks with you. I'm seeing like this, this social element of being healthy and like you've been kind of like maybe you and your friends are trying to live a healthier lifestyle so um maybe if you go out to dinner you're going out to healthier restaurants or you're trying veganism or vegetarianism together or you know you have friends that you go to the gym with you know and that's the thing you do together and i i really do want to say that you're the people you surround yourself with are so important for what path you lead in life and, and how 2023 will be determined because like, let's just say you hang out with your friends a lot, you know, friends are a really big part of your life. Or even like, if you're all about romantic relationships and you spend all your time with your partner, you know, um, if that is someone who enjoys like fast food and smoking cigarettes and gossiping, um, that's obviously not something you're gonna benefit from. So, but when you surround yourself with people and instead of like choosing, like let, let's just say you hang out with your friends once a week during that time what are you doing you know maybe you normally used to just go out to bars and drink heavily and feel like crap the next morning but now you're like you know what how about when i hang out with my friends we go to the gym you know that's the activity we do we work out together we go for walks together what if we start you know spending this time that we spend with each other regardless and instead of doing something that is just not beneficial for our growth we actually do something beneficial for our growth we all have the need to socialize and to be with other people right and so i this is a really good piece of advice um for anybody who's like socially anxious or like doesn't know how to make friends think of it like this the things that you do in your everyday life that will lead you to your growth just invite friends to do it and it's as simple as that it's literally as simple as that that's how you make friends. Whatever you're doing in life, whatever you want your life to look like, just invite some people along for the journey. That's what friendship is, okay? So if you're somebody who goes to the gym like four times a week, all right, invite a friend. Invite, make a friend that likes working out. You know, there's so many ways to make friends. The internet is such a valuable resource as well. Just bring friends along. And then you have a routine with that person where you're seeing them regularly, you're making friendships, okay? I don't know. Anyways, this is a card about health and well-being, and I just feel like your health and well-being is strongly uh, tied to the people in your life at this time. So choose your friends wisely, you know? Choose the people who want to go for walks with you, who want to buy smoothies with you or go to the gym with you. Don't choose the people who all they want to do is drink heavily every single weekend and just do the same old thing and eat all this junk food and like all these things that make you feel like crap just don't do it. Or if you really, really like that person, you know, ask them, you know, how about instead of, you know, going to the bar, we like hit the gym or like go for a walk and get smoothies. I don't know. I I feel like when you incorporate a social element to it, um, it becomes a lot, like, it's almost like you want to do it more regularly, you know? So your health and well-being is very strongly tied to your relationships this year for sure um moving on we have your spiritual energy and inner fulfillment represented by the woodward strength hmm i don't know okay this is, might be a weird message for some of you guys but i'm seeing a really strong spiritual connection to your pets if you have any pets like you you might have been feeling like this is my um my familiar this is my my soulmate and it's like yes absolutely um we, we're seeing here the human's relationship with earth with mother earth and and with animals coming out for your spiritual fulfillment also i'm seeing here so this did come out in reversed this card is actually all about kind of taming the beast within um not being afraid of your own shadow not being afraid of your own darkness and being able to sit down and have heavy conversations when necessary or look within regularly or kind of face the shadows in life you know that whole love and light good vibes only form of spirituality that's not spirituality at all that is 
brainwashing. I don't know what it is. It ain't spirituality because let me tell you, let me tell you, spirituality is actually quite the opposite. It is like staring at your own traumas and what's wrong with the world and what's wrong with you. And instead of just ignoring it, you're choosing to do something about it and grow from it and evolve from it and help other people do the same thing. Like, so I feel like if you're wanting that spiritual connection and fulfillment this year, stop trying to drown out your issues with distractions and actually look within and and have difficult conversations, you know, be honest with people, help people, help yourself, be honest with yourself. What do you need to better your life right now and do the work to do it? You know, spirituality isn't like herb bundles and crystals. It is doing the hard work to better your life. It is doing shadow work. It is seeking help physically, mentally, emotionally, so you can become your best version. Because when you're your best version, you can help others become your best version. And what is the higher purpose of this all? Is to make the world a better place. But you can't do that unless you are becoming your best version as well, because you are the world and the world is you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So if you want more spiritual fulfillment, if you've been feeling lost in life, if you've been looking for your reason for doing things, I think doing all that spiritual work will help you out. <laughs> so next card, we have what you most need to focus on for the year ahead. The green woman, ooh, empress, divine feminine energies, stepping into your abundance, cultivating your abundance, getting your mindset right, for sure. I feel like some of y'all need to really, really change your mindset when it comes to some things and, and step into this green woman energy of like, I can create whatever reality that I want. I am mother earth in human form. I am spirit in human form. I have the power to do anything I want in, to my, in my life. I have the power to birth any reality that I want into existence. Your biggest lesson this year is really stepping into this peaceful, abundant energy and, and understanding. And we see the green woman twice here as well. You did a ton of healing work in 2022. And now it's, it's almost like the 2022 was a year of looking in the past and growing and healing and letting go. And 2023 is a year of looking into the future and evolving and moving forward and birthing a new reality for yourself into existence by taking on bold new habits, new relationships, new new friendships. Uh, bold bold action, guys. That like that that's it. Bold action. Some of y'all are having kids this year or like just making really like I said, really big life choices. Really big life choices. New job, new people, family, evolving or devolving relationships. Really big life choices are happening for you this year. I don't know what it is for you personally. If you want, you can get a personal reading. I, I'll do the same exact reading, but just for you and not the collective. Who's like the group number four? It's on my website, spiritpsychic.org. But big life changes going on in general for you. All right. So what is your most important lesson in the coming year? We have six of arrows reverse transition. The universe is trying to guide you towards calmer waters at this time, more stability, more stable ground. You're in the water right now. Things are kind of, and you know what's funny? We talked about sailboats earlier as an example. And look, you have your sails up. You're using your conscious mind and decision-making skills to reach solid ground, okay? To navigate yourself to solid ground in life. Because right now you've been going through so many ebbs and flows and, and changes, feeling very out of control when it comes to what happens in life and and you put your sails up and you're saying you know what i'm gonna take bold action conscious action and intention to go where i want to go wherever that is wow your biggest lesson is to choose to navigate yourself to higher waters higher waters calmer waters higher ground calmer waters make the decision to better your life stop sitting around and waiting for it to manifest itself. Mm. Take the actions 
needed, the hard work needed. Mm, mm-hmm. And final tarot card before we get into your channeled messages from spirit. Where are you heading in the next 12 months overall? Where are you heading in 2023 overall? The world tree in reversed. Yeah, I can see that. There's a huge life transition happening for you this year. Huge. This is the final card of the major arcana and it is literally the tree of life with all of our seasons. And this down here represents the spiritual path that takes us there. You know, sometimes it appears like we're going backwards and forwards and all over, but it all leads us to the same place anyway. Your life path is your own. Take your own unique life path boldly. Embrace the cyclical nature of life. You know, what? I'm just going to read this from the book itself for you so you get a really good understanding of where you're going this year. So, the world tree, reading points. The universe and all of its blessings are available to everyone who seeks knowledge and wisdom with a sincere heart. On every level, the cosmos has a generous bounty and gives freely of its rich nourishment and fulfillment. No matter how long the journey of life may be, however many twists and turns this maze may offer us, in the end, if we persevere, we will reach the point of fulfillment. This may relate to material gain or wealth, or to spiritual happiness and emotional security. But after the long process of learning, responsibility, and rebirth, it is now time to bathe in the light of renewal, attainment, and personal triumph. Breathe in the rich air, drink of the sweet water, and rejoice in the warming fire of the universal life force, guys. This year is heading you, is leading you directly, directly to your emotional fulfillment, to that solid ground. You've been in the waters of chaos and confusion literally your whole life. You finally, finally learned in 2022 how to put the sails up and use conscious actions and decisions to navigate your own life. Like you had the spiritual awakening that made you realize like you are very much in control of your life. Like maybe you always knew that, but like it really sunk into a deep level. And now you're actually like, no, I seriously do have control of my life and you are moving yourself to solid ground this year and you're making a lot of progress. I still feel like you're gonna make even more progress in the coming years as well, but you're literally almost there and life is getting so much better for you this year alone. So much good is happening, like better relationships, career and material success and fulfillment, um, spiritual fulfillment, that's what's developing right now. You're taking big, bold actions and leaps, starting to see your, your future unfold for you, ambition, big swoops of positive change, experiencing ecstasy in this present moment because you've done so much healing. Like you're returning back to where you were supposed to be in the first place. You're returning back to your natural, full, peaceful, unconditionally loving self who is enjoying life. You were meant to enjoy life and you're returning back to that energy. So now let's get some channeled messages from your spirit guides to finish off what do they want to tell you for the year ahead. Just ask. Big facts. Big facts right here. There are many of us here in the spirit world that can assist you at this time. We are made up of the divine source, your loved ones, friends, guides, angels, and spiritual helpers who are waiting to assist you. We are your spiritual team and all you have to do is ask for our help and guidance. Straight up. And then we have... This is a postcard from your spiritual team. Dearest you, there is only one you and you have a unique path and a special purpose. Pause and let's just say like literally they use the words unique path, many paths, unique path. The journey card is about finding your unique path. Even the end result, the world tree, this down here is about finding your unique path in life. The twists and turns, the decisions and changes that happen in your life are totally yours alone. And in the whole entire multiverse, this life that you are having is only yours. Mm. Anyways, you're supposed to have specific experiences in this world and meet certain people, but then it is up to you how you live, how awake you choose to be, and how willing you are to grow and strip away what's false. Facts. 2023 is the year where you take back power. You realize, oh, I'm actually in control of my life. And yes, the universe may have me go through certain experiences and chance encounters, but besides that, I'm completely in control here. Don't compare yourself to others. It's easy to think a person is happier just because their outside looks good according to society standards, but you can't know anyone's internal experience. Compare yourself only to your past self. See how far you've come. 
Don't be distracted by what others are doing or accomplishing. Stay focused on what inspires you. That's how you get successful and find happiness. Want what you have now, not what someone else has. We love you immensely and know your journey ahead is sparkling with miracles and wonderful things. Trust. Loving you forever and ever. I feel like you are attracting so much wealth and happiness this year, guys. Like, straight up. Because you're starting to realize, you know what? I'm in control of this. And where was the empress the the green woman this is someone who understands i am creating my reality so i choose to mentally be aligned with the the reality that i want to manifest so really big tip there thank you guys for joining me like share comment and subscribe if you want your own personal reading just like this where i only focus on you not like a hundred other people um the link to that is in the description spiritpsychic.org and then go to sessions and then scroll down and you will see the new year tarot and mediumship reading is available for you all right 100 dollars, totally a steal you'll get it within seven days of ordering it thank you for joining me guys bye